Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi barakatuh, peace be upon everyone who's watching. My name is Kenny Bomer. This is Kenny Bomer Live on Consider This TV, where truth is made clear from falsehood. And I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his final servant and the seal of all prophets. Alhamdulillah, the mean. Hey, listen, so I've uh, been busy, been busy uh, trying to get ready for an upcoming debate. And matter of fact, I've been delayed and working on. Uh, my my books and uh, because of that research that I'm doing, but it's very important. And um, so yeah, so I want to say uh, assalamu alaikum to everyone in the chat. And we're going to be discussing uh, a book, a book. We have Brother Abu Yazid that's going to be joining us here shortly, and we're going to be discussing the book written by uh, Nabil Qureshi. And I haven't actually read this particular book myself. But Brother Abu Yazid is actually reading it now, and he wants to discuss some things. And so we're waiting for him. Matter of fact, let me check my WhatsApp. Make sure. Okay. All right. So he should he should be on the way. He said he was feeling a bit under the weather earlier, so he took some medication, so he might be falling. Uh, uh, <laughs> I might have fell asleep. <laughs> there he is right there. He's backstage. All right. So I'm going to bring the brother on. So alhamdulillah. Brother Abu Yazid, assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Right. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing doing fine. Are you feeling better, brother? Yeah. Man, good, I, good. Good, good. I good. take um, you know, I have epilepsy. So okay. I take uh epilepsy medicine plus I take uh something uh that's natural. Mm. Uh, and that man it knocked me out, which it usually doesn't do like that, but it knocked me out. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Well, I'm glad you you're here, and uh, may Allah bless you and make make ease for you in your your, your medical situation. I mean, Alhamdulillah. So, okay, listen. Uh, so this book, No God, but One, by Nabil Qureshi, and uh, the, the the subtitle is is uh, Allah or Jesus. So, of course, I haven't read this book, um, but uh, let's talk about it. Let's open it up and and uh, let's talk about it, brother. I mean, so I don't know if you've seen. This is the cover of the book. Yeah, yeah. he wrote. He was. He's written a few books. Um, let's see, the Bill Hureshi. One of them is a bestseller. Yeah, that's um, uh, seeking Allah, finding Jesus. Yeah, that one um, sold a lot. He had one called Answering Jihad. <laughs> um, yeah. Those are the books that I'm seeing. Those, let's see, wrote some other books. Those are the top selling books. Um, seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, No God But One, Allah or Jesus, Answering Jihad. These are some of his top books there. So he also was a part of... Um, a particular Christian organization, RISM, um, which is like, which well, I don't know. So I don't know if I can say is or was because they are actually they're shutting that ministry down. But it was at one time probably the most well-funded 
Christian missionary organization in the world. Hmm. Um, absolutely, absolutely the most well funded Christian Christian in, um, institution in the world it's outside of a church or a uh, denomination as far as what's called a parachurch organization. Hmm. You know, so they had all types of money to, you know, back him and other Christian apologists up. And this is why he was, you know, because Nabil Qureshi's his a little backstory on him is that, you know, he was, I believe, in the college Old Dominion. And that's where he met David Wood, who was a well-known Christian apologist. Most people may or may not know. And it was engaging with David Wood that he left um, the Ahmadi and became Christian. And once he... Once he did that, he began to work with um, David Wood in doing uh, apologetics and and trying to call Muslims to Christ to Christianity. But from my standpoint, the, to me, the emphasis was more than that. The emphasis was to provide information and media to a particular market that is set up for um, talking about Islam. Some people would categorize this as the Islamophobia industry. That's a, that's a term that some people throw out there. Um, Christian apolog apologetics, uh, uh, missionary work to Muslims, uh, Islam Islamophobia industry, whatever name you want to call it. It, it. it absolutely does exist. So there is a, a uh, a market out here for people to write books, write articles, blog posts, do um, podcasting, um, have YouTube channels and other platforms to uh, travel throughout the throughout the world. Really, um, getting speakers' fees, all about um, Islam. Mm -hmm. So when he when Nabil Qureshi wrote a book like. Like we uh, I just said maybe five minutes ago, answering jihad. Now, do you think you know some jihadis are going to read that book? You know, like ISIS in yeah. Iraq is going to go out and read the book and you know, I don't know, convert to Christianity or something. Right. That book is, and yeah, that book is for, and that book is for evangelical Christians. Mm -hmm. It's for evangelical Christians. No Muslims were reading that book. Um, Jihad or not, uh, Takfiri or not, um, brother, brother. You still let me. I don't mean to interrupt you there, but what I noticed when I looked up his books uh, yesterday on uh, on Amazon, did you see what what uh, genre it was under? What it was? It, it said uh, something about. I have to look it up if if you don't have it up there. But uh, it, it was saying something about Islamic uh, practices and beliefs and practices and so forth. Giving the impression that, of course, you know, we we know that who's who's buying those books. Uh, it didn't become a bestseller like you mentioned by uh, uh, being bought by uh, uh, Muslims by no means, or uh, even so-called Muslims uh, such as ISIS and so people committing acts of terror and so forth. Uh, but what's interesting is that it's listed under, uh, uh, however it was worded. I have to look it up real quick. <laughs> Do you have it up, brother? Yeah, I have it up on um, Amazon. And yeah, it's, it, it says page for him and a listing of his books. Yeah, and it's, it's, it shows the category of either that book or or the the bestseller. Uh, let me see if I can find it as as you were speaking. But um, and he actually wrote that book with Lee Strobel. He, Lee Strobel did the forwarding. Lee Strobel is a very well known, very well known Christian apologist. Hmm. Uh, he did actually he did a couple of movies. Um, against atheism because he used to be an atheist and yeah. then he uh became a theist and he did a couple of he did he wrote a big book is very well known and he did they turned the book into a movie they did two parts of that movie um and, and as far as far as nabil qureshi he was a uh caudiani right he was a, a that's was correct a yeah uh and if i if i based on our interaction that we had on uh, brother uh, Muhammad's channel, uh, Co Coventry Faith Foundation, last week or last couple of weeks, we had a, a Kaldiani that was on, and he was saying that they believe that uh, the Jesus peace be upon him, as so-called quote unquote Muslims, they believe that he died on the cross. 
So this yeah, this yeah. shows this demonstrates the background that that Nabil Qureshi came from, and we're we're not talking about him. He's he's deceased at this point, but we're talking about the the Islamophobia, the propaganda that's used, and he was basically being exploited. Now he's someone who comes from a, a belief system that they believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, died on the cross. So it's not real hard for that that type of person to wind up accepting Christianity if you have that belief. You know, uh, and so we just want to want to point that out. This this so-called quote unquote group of Muslims are actually outside of the fold of, of Islam, of Orthodox Islam. And well, they have other beliefs too. Um that's just yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Um uh, as far as they were saying um uh Isa alayhi salam died on the cross. Um they have an individual who started their group. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but supposedly he's a, he was supposed to be a prophet and messenger. Even though we know for certain that, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, uh, was the last and final prophet and messenger. The Quran is clear, it's calling him the last prophet. And no one can be a no one can be a prophet, no one can be a messenger without being a prophet. So if Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last prophet, he's also the last messenger. So these these individuals like uh you know the one who started the Qadiani sect um you know the nation of islam uh, the mormons all these other different people with these you know quote unquote new prophets and new messengers we know we know from the quran that this is falsehood this right. is falsehood um but it shows you it shows you and this is something i i'm grappling with while reading this book what I'm grappling with is what were the real intentions of uh, Nabil Quraysh? And I, I don't, I don't completely know. Um, I, my, I suspect most people are complicated. Most people's psyches are very complicated. Nothing yeah. is ever one way. I think there's at one point he may have had some, some he sincerely believed in Christianity uh, he may have wanted to be, you know, this evangelic evangelist to Muslims. Um, I'm sure if he believed in it, believed in it, he wanted his family members to convert also. Um, but it seems to me, when he became famous, when he started getting book deals, when he started hooking up with Rizm um, apologetics, that the uh, his intentions may have changed. Because when I read through the book. It's hard for me to believe that anybody, first of all, no one who claims that they were a former Muslim, it's hard to believe they would make some of the statements that he makes in this book. And But we know that he was a part of the uh, Qadiyani Ahmadiyya group, so maybe you can make an excuse from that angle. But if you, it seems to me if you, you wrote a book, and I'm sure you put in hundreds if not thousands of hours of research Absolutely. into writing that book and you know checking everything three or four or five different times to make sure you're not putting something in the book that can be criticized, that can um, take away from the the authenticity of your book. And it doesn't seem like him or, or the people he dealt with, dealt with, at least in this book, because I don't have access to, I don't have the other books, that they did much research on what it is that Islam teaches. They make a lot of assumptions about what Islam teaches a lot of straw man arguments, and then they try to knock down those straw man arguments. And this is why, this is why the book is this, this is why this book is troublesome. And like you said, the book you saw in Amazon, you know, his book, you know, searching for Allah, finding Jesus, under the category of, you know, if it's under the category of some type of Islamic studies, yeah, that's extremely problematic. Because what happens if a per a sincere person goes on Amazon? And they start, I just want to search for a book about Islam. I don't know anything about Islam. Let me find something I can learn about Islam from. Then they find books like this. Yeah. yeah. Or they find books like um, like um, uh, James White, his book. Um, he James White put out a book about Islam. Somebody's blasting some, uh, some old tunes, some old school tunes in the background outside. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, they find a book like James White. James White put out a book about Islam. I don't know if you remember that from a few years ago. You remember that book? I don't remember the name of that book, but I know what you're talking about. I, I don't. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Let's see, what's the name of that book? 
what every Christian needs to know about the Quran. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. So, so a person is going to go do a Google search or go on Amazon. They're going to find books like that, or they're going to find books like this, or or seeking Allah, finding Jesus, and they're going to get misinformation. And like I said, I struggle with knowing the true intentions. I would even go a step further, not just misinformation, but intentional distortions. Yeah. About what Islam is and what Muslims believe, and these type of books and this type of Islamophobia media is put out here, even though this he's Nabil comes off as a nice guy in the book, it still it still adds to Islamophobia in my opinion. And we saw what the tragedy that just happened a few days ago in London, Ontario, with the family of five that were mowed down, that were ran over. By a 20 year old Islamophobe, a terrorist, a terrorist. Let's get that right. I was just mentioning uh, the, this, this 20 year old terrorist who came and m ran a family over, who were just taking an evening walk as a family. Like a lot of families, like I, me and my family do sometimes. Did, um, is it are we at the point in North America where a Muslim family can a Muslim family cannot walk down the street and mind their own business without an Islamophobe trying to harm them, kill them, harass them, berate them? Is that where we're at now? Because we've seen different Islamophobia terrorist acts taking place over the years, right? Uh, what happened down in New Zealand? What happened in there was a tragedy in Canada before where someone shot up a, a masjid uh, over in, in Europe. It, we have countless examples. In each one of those examples, some of these people even wrote manifestos. And inside their manifestos, they're quoting Islam professional Islamophobes, mm -hmm. like David Wood. They're quoting them. They were influenced by them. So the next, the next, this this individual who mowed the, the family down in London, Ontario, is it possible that he read this book? Is it possible that he read "Searching for um, Allah, Finding Jesus," or saw some video with Nabil Qureshi or Nabil uh, doing some rhythm conference, or him talking with um, mocking Muslims? Because we you know the people tried to set Nabil up as some type of nice guy, but their video I've seen the videos of him with David Wood mocking Islam, you know, mocking Islam, and he, we know he perished, he died. What I was told is that on his deathbed, he said, you know, he didn't want the things that he wrote and the things that he did to be used to um, harm Muslims, which is a good thing. But he didn't <laughs> repent. He didn't, as far as I know, Allah knows best, but he didn't repent. He didn't repent even if he didn't return back to Islam, he didn't make a stronger statement saying, I condemn the things that I wrote. I don't want you to use these books anymore. I don't want you to use those videos anymore. I don't want you to cause harm to Muslims. He didn't do that. So not only did he die as a Kafir, which is between him and Allah, and we seek refuge from dying like that, but he died with this record of his this record of these books and these apologetic works that he did that, in my opinion, f fuel Islamophobia and disinformation about Islam. So he has to answer for that on the day of judgment. He has That's to right. completely answer for that. Individuals like David Wood and Sam Shimon and Christian Prince and uh, critiquing Islam and all these other individuals, if they don't repent before they perish, they're not only going to die as the kufar, disbelievers and the oneness of Allah and the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're also going to have to face the judgment of they, they were soldiers. They were ideal, ideological soldiers in an ideological crusade against Islam. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me ask you brothers a question in, in regards to that, because obviously we know that this type of rhetoric, this is what, you know, what I'm combating in my book, uh, 
consider Islam disproving the patriots of propaganda because they're trying to attack those patriots that you mentioned earlier, the the, the Christian uh, right wingers that uh, that you know that um, you know uh, that, that that follow these types of people and you know this this rhetoric that they're using is very damaging. It's very it's 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 poison in society. That's what my books are all about. That's what the new books are all about. And awesome. that's what we try to combat co constantly through these types of streams and so forth. So let me ask you both, both you brothers uh, individually, and welcome to the show, uh, Brother Ziad. Um, but so but, but uh, let me allow both of you to answer a question for me. And, and how do you think that we should respond to these types of things, you know, as Muslims? What, what, what is our position in dealing with the rhetoric that a person – uh, like David Wood and you know Christian Prince and these types of guys that they they constantly saturate the you know social media and so forth uh, with with these these hate this hate mongering and these these anti Muslim anti Islam you know your prophet this your prophet that you know Allah's Satan and so forth all that type of bantering how should we as Muslims counter that in in dealing with those individuals. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, whoever wants to go first. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to go into detail about what's his name, Banabil Qureshi. Um, and I know that he's deceased now. He died, I think, I think he died from cancer, something like that. I believe so. Liver, it was liver cancer, something like that. Anyway, um, regarding the dawah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly in the Quran. In chapter 103, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَسَّبُوا الْحَقِّ وَتَوَسَّبُوا الصَّبْرِ Translation, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, by the dwelling, or excuse me, by the declining day, lo, man is in a state of loss. Man, notice what it says, except for those who believe the mu'minun, and do good deeds and exhort one another in truth and they exhort one another to endurance. In so patience. basically, in, in patience, yes, exactly. Uh, so basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the right deeds and be patient with these people. Okay. And uh, brother Kenny, mashallah for you, you always say, let's be patient with these Allah people. Akbar, Allah Akbar. Unfortunately, I don't have that patience. I admit that. I don't have that patience. I become very aggressive towards the hypocrites. You know me. I can't stand them. And I'm not talking only about the enemies of Islam. I'm even talking about people who, you know, they are good Muslims. They pretend to be good Muslims, but you know what they do in the back. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions them in Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 8 to 18. I'm not going to go through that. Okay? But basically... Do good deeds, be patient. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sta'inu bis-sabr, bis-sabr, notice the word, was salah and the prayer. Inna Allah ma'as-sabreen. O you who believe, seek Allah's help with patience and prayer, for assuredly, I am with the patient. That's right, Allah Akbar. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Brother Abi Aziz, what 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 advice would you give to people in responding to the, this type of uh, hate hate mongering and so forth that's used to attack Islam? Well, we have to understand that as as numerous as the Islamophobes may be, as many platforms as they're on, as much money is put behind them, as many organizations are secretly funding this provoking this, putting this information out there so it can be repeated. Um, this, ideolo this, this, this ide ideology, uh, ideology of, uh, of hatred, this, 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 you know, this, 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 this um, thing that is inside people where they despise Muslims and they despise Islam. It's fueled, it's fueled, but it's weak. The plan of, of shaitan is weak, no matter what, how it looks. Is shaitan strong? We don't even ask, answer, ask the question. If, is shaitan even matching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We're not Christians. 
We don't see, you know, like you don't have memes with God, pictures of God and Satan arm wrestling each other. Satan is a creature. He's given he's given a space and a time that he's allowed to do whatever he is going to do. And Allah has made promises and all the promises of Allah cannot be broken. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahaba, Ready Allahu and whom gave us the best examples of how to defeat Islamophobia. They not only defeated Islamophobia, but they established Al Islam upon the earth and spread it across the earth. So if we return back to them, we return back to what they were upon, we return back to what they took and held and held hold to. We have their mindset and their way of thinking and their way of living, then we will have this, some, some, some sibilance of success that they would have had and other Muslims throughout history have had because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot break a promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his way is this, his, the sirat al mustaqim. It's the same exact way. In 2021, it's the same way that it was 5,000 years ago or so when Abraham, peace be upon him, was upon the earth. It hasn't changed. Allah will, Allah is with the pious people. Allah is with those who fear him. Allah is with those who stand in prayer. Allah is with those who remember him much. Allah is with those who make dua. Allah is with those who recite the Quran constantly. Allah is with those who memorize hadith. Allah is with those, Allah is with those, Allah is with those. And nobody, and no matter how it looks, nobody can stand against them. In the end, they get the, the, the pious win. So if, if it is that these people are overcoming us, or if it appears that we're being overcome, it's not about them, it's about us. You know, we have to do some soul searching some hard examination about ourselves and we have to look at ourselves as a ummah and you know what are where are we going wrong where do we need to repent where do we need to amend our our, our actions and our thinking so that Allah will give us the victory and having victory over these people is easy every time i've engaged these people it's not it's not a hard argument it's not a hard discussion it's a very easy to, to turn over whatever they, they're saying if you can pin them down to having a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you. Because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put this stuff out here, they'll put this misinformation out here, and then they cut and run. Mm -hmm. like, like George Bush Sr. used to say, cut and run. You know, so, but they can't, look at the some of the Muslim brothers that we have out here online. And, you know, the brothers aren't perfect. But some of the brothers that are doing dawah, a quote unquote, the dawah scene, or brothers who, are, who may not even be recognized, you don't know their names and faces who are out here doing dawah. And these are some smart brothers and sisters, and sisters, smart, very smart, very capable. I would put, I would put the average Muslim da'i with any Christian apologist. And it's not even a it's not even a competition. It's they're weak. Their arguments are weak. Their, their minds are weak. This is why they have to distort. This is why they have to lie. This is why they have to mock. So, so, now, so in, in particular, in, in regards to their mockery, should we meet their mockery with mockery? Or should we do what Allah says in the Quran to fight evil with that which is better? Allah says, Can I just so, quickly, brother? brother. Can, can I just uh, quickly say something because I need, it's late and I need to go. I just came in quickly sure. just to mention something. First sure. of all, salam alaikum, brother Abu Ziyad. Uh, wow. and, uh, uh, yeah. and uh, Abu, Abu Yazid, yeah, Abu Yazid and uh, brother Ziyad as well, uh, salam alaikum, and Kenny well, and uh, brother well, Bati as well. Um, the, th the, the thing that I have to point out is, the, uh, you know, especially these, these people who are in the, the, the high-level ap uh, apologetics in Christianity, I think it is awfully shameful for them to kind of use this kind of rhetoric against Islam. You know, what they what they do actually is not something new. I mean, I'm at the moment I'm actually studying a lot of the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because uh, as from next week I intend to start a seerah series of the Prophet. 
And Masha while Allah. I'm going through that, you can see the hatred that they had from the, for the Prophet wasalam, from the beginning. They wanted to get rid of that message because that is the true message of of uh, of the Prophet of, of Allah. So it is not something new. It's something that we know from from long time ago. Something that's been going on. So what we need to do is for those of them who are reasonable enough. Brother Jamal, we're, we're getting a lot of feedback right now for yeah. some reason. I don't know. I don't know whether I don't know why there's feedback coming on my um, from my mic. Um. For for the for those who are willing to engage with us, but engage with us in good faith. You know, engage with us. You know our books. We know your books. You bring your 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 proofs. No red herrings or whatever. Then we can have decent conversation with people. But you know that people who deliberately are out there spreading falsehood, spreading lies. You know, and it sometimes it, it that's what makes you feel bitter against them. Okay, and that's the know. point. That's the question that I'm asking: is yeah. how should we respond when that's, they when they when they uh, when they cause this uh, this bitterness to, to rise up within you? This is, what, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Mockery, so mockery, how, how should, if they right. if they agree, if they agree to come with us on a, on a level playing field, no problem. You know, on a level playing field, you have your proofs. We have our proofs. And also, you know, you know, I mean, I'm sure brothers know, these people know that what they're putting towards our people is falsehood from, of our religion. They're going and getting one ayah from here, half an ayah from there, uh, um, hadith which they know are not authentic. Why do you have to play these games? You know, so this is an appeal to them who are listening out there, those are apologetic. If you want to come in and, and discuss with us, no problem. We have no problems with you. We love you as 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 brothers in humanity. Yeah, we are made by the same crea creator. Our our belief is different. But why do you? Why would you have to come towards us with falsehood and try to kind of like you know demean our religion, but still insist that we respect you? Still insist that like you know we are good to you. You know, come come to us in. A, this is an appeal to to these brothers. Come to us on a level playing field. If you like, you know, you you bring your your proofs, we bring our proofs, and I don't think there will be any problems from, from that. But when yeah, but people so, are writing books, and then they from these books are getting people to do evil works against Muslims, yeah, you let, know, let, pulling, so, pulling sisters pulling sisters hijabs off and beating sisters and stuff like that yes. through reading the lies that they have put so, in these books. So, brother Jamal, the, the question that I'm at, I'm trying to get to is how should Muslims respond? To this, I'm not talking about you know the, the debates back and forth. And you bring your evidence, and we bring ours. Of course, we're going to do that. But I'm saying the attitude, the the mockery, the the vile and the vicious uh, uh, demeanor that they have, the rhetoric that they use. How should Muslims respond? Should we respond with the with the like rhetoric, or should we be patient in dealing with these type type people, and try to 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 to, 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 to fight their evil? With that which is better, which is what Allah says in Surah Fusilat, to fight evil with that which is better, so that he between whom and you there's enmity may become as your closest of friends. Now, I don't suspect that we're going to become the closest of friends with, with a person like a Christian Prince or you know whoever. But if we can if we can bridge a gap through decency, it, do you do you brothers think that that's what we sh we should be doing? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has has explained to us how to do the da'wah. Yeah, to 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 reach out to them in 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 kindness with 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 uh, wise. I mean, that, that's not the word that's used in the Quran. I'm I'm actually um, paraphrasing. But it when says, we reach out to them, we yeah, reach says, out to them in, to the with, way kind words. With, with kind words yeah. and, and argue with them in ways that are both best exactly. and most gracious. Now, right. now that is that is that is our reaching out. Mm -hmm. Now, whether they want to accept that or they want that they, they don't want to, want to that is uh, from their side. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us. Uh, what to be good to our Muslim brothers and to be harsh to the to, to, to the hypocrites. You know, there are times we have to be harsh with them as well. Yeah, we'll be good to our Muslim brothers and when they want to be harsh, we'll be harsh with them. But if we are reaching out and we are offering wisdom, we're offering kindness to you, then please accept it back. You know, if they don't accept it back, then, you know, there is, I mean, uh, there's only enough sometimes we can do, you know, because yeah. they are they are on a mission. They are on a mission to destroy Islam. They get paid for it, and like you know, you, if you take the money away from these brothers, uh, from these people, they will not be attacking Islam. They're on a mission, yeah. 
So yeah. the fact that they're on a mission, we will be reaching out to them, fine, no problem, we will good deal to them, we will talk to them nicely, we'll try and build bridges. I told somebody on, on Facebook the other day, I'm building bridges, he said, I'm not interested in, in building bridges with you people. You know, yeah, you have well, that, some of that them, you have some of them, when we call them brother, they say, don't call me brother. You know, don't call me brother, I'm not your brother, you know. So yeah. we are doing what we can from our side, yeah. And if they do not accept, then the Prophet ﷺ told us, if you have to be harsh to them, you be you be kind to your Muslim brother. But if you have to be harsh to them, you you be harsh to them. So, depending on their intentions as well, we cannot always be like you know turn the other cheek and like you know yeah fine yeah, like you know turn totally the other cheek as well. So let me, let me present let me present a, a scenario to you, brothers. And assalamu alaikum, brother Batif. Uh, welcome to the panel. But let, let me let me before we go to the brothers yard, let me present a scenario to you. I to suspected you that photo. <laughs> okay. So so let's say, by example, this is you know, this is I know this is a, a a reach to say the least, but let's take a person like like Christian Prince and all the damage that he he does actually he's damaging himself islam is still the fastest growing religion in every country in the world and Allah, you can't stop islam but but nevertheless in in the uh in in based on the the effect that he has on on people who follow him and so forth let's say let's let's create a scenario in which and i want to get your, your opinion about this so collectively as the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam we we're, we 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 are uh annoyed by this type of antagonism but but let's let's create a scenario where a, let's say that a, a single individual or maybe a couple of individuals establish a, a a dialogue with a person like christian prince to where they actually and, and they're muslim obviously a muslim let's say a muslim is engaging with christian prince and they're actually engaging in decent conversation with one another be it private or, or, or otherwise, let's say in a private situation. Should, do you believe that that Muslim should, despite what Christian Prince goes back and does after their discussion, do you think that that effort by that Muslim should be continuous in trying to, to reach Christian Prince through ongoing dawah, through, through decent conversation with him, despite what he's doing, despite what he's doing that the Muslim doesn't agree with, Right, the Muslim does not agree with what he's saying, but maybe that that Muslim could be the instrument that Allah uses to reach a person like that. Now, in the history of Islam, we know that there were Muslims—I mean, not Muslims, but there were uh, there were uh, 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 people that were so vile and vicious against Islam that they were they were abusing Muslims, they were attacking Muslims, they were killing Muslims. But some of those people that were doing that became Muslims eventually. And they became Muslims because of the way Muslims were responding. So, what I, so my my question is: Do you think the individual, let's say the individual, who who can establish a rapport, a, a, a dialogue with this individual who's vile and vicious openly, but in a private discussion, he seems to lower his his you know he, you can actually engage him in a decent decent conversation. Do you think that Allah respects that that Muslim's efforts and his intentions to try to plant seeds? in a person like that like Christian Prince. And I'm not saying that scenario is going on, but what I'm saying is if you come across this type of individual as an individual, do you think that it's your duty as a Muslim to try to fight evil with that which is better in order to change that, that person's heart and have a positive effect on that person as a, as a Muslim? Based on the guidance that Allah has given us and the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba. Can I just mention um, uh, uh, what, you, what you've just um, uh, spoken about? These people, in a private discussion with you, they could be the best people ever there because um, uh, face to face they probably don't want to be um, hostile and like you know man to man. There, but but because they're on a mission and they have to prove things to people, sometimes because of what they want to show to people, like for example, like the um, 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 I'm sure Christian Prince because he he knows he's got thousands and thousands of people listening to him, you know, so he has to make a show. You know, but I'm sure this man, if he comes in front of your face, he will not have the heart, he will not have the courage, he will not have the guts to open his mouth and tell you the same thing that he tells you behind his computer. Right. So they play a double game, these people. And this is why. The but so, so, has but, but I don't want to get away from the, and create the different scenarios. What I'm trying to yeah. get at is what do you feel the individual who can establish that, that conversation with such a person? Do you think that person should just abandon the, 
no, abandon ship, say, you know what, let me forget hadith, about that person. There is the hadith that tells you, in al amalu bin niyat. Yeah? Everything is according to, um, uh, according to your in intentions. If our intentions are right, and we're working to, to, to work on them and do da'wah to them, and no matter how much we are trying, how much we, are, we were trying, the Prophet ﷺ used to go and knock on Abu Jahl's door sometime seven times a day. He used to go and knock on his door. Allahu Akbar. You know, to, to bring the message to him in all kindness and all fairness. Yet Abu Jahl was one of the worst enemies that he had. You see, so there are some people that you cannot change them sometimes. Right. We have to keep, we have to keep trying. We have to keep trying. We, keep trying. we have to be as, 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 as kind as, as we can to them. But... We cannot, like I say, turn the other cheek as well. We cannot show them that we are pacifists. That, like, you know, no. You want to understand, you don't want to understand. Allah is the one who guides. Lakum dinakum okay. You know, lakum dinakum You go your way, I go, I go mine. You know, you go and do your, your, your harshness to, to, to other people. I've tried my best. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, if Allah gives you another chance, you come. If Allah gives you another chance, you come back. Um, um, I'm always here. I'm always waiting as a friend. You know, you want to come back and shake hands and we talk about it. No problem. But That's if right. you've reached out to somebody several times, several times, you're reaching out to them, being kindness to them, then no point being stupid after that. Yeah. You know? Okay. Brother Ziad, go ahead, brother. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala wa So I was watching this amazing brother. He's in, he's actually in the States. I'm sure you've heard of him, Sheikh of Man ibn Farooq. Yes. This brother, mashallah, he confronted the three little piggies. I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> but brother, brother, answer, brother Ziad, answer the, 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 the question about the scenario that I presented. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point. The brother was patient with them. He was explaining things over and over and over. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوَادِ الْحَسَنَ وَجَدِلْهُمْ بِالَّذِي أَحْسَنَ Notice, invite the way of your Lord with beautiful preaching, and with kindness and uh, argue with them with ways which are better the brother argued with them with which which ways that are better the three little piggies of course as you said brother they earlier they didn't revert they didn't come back to the truth however what was the result of those debates because they went to confront him and he didn't even know who they were he heard about them but he didn't know who they were with his da'wah subhanallah many people watch those videos even from the hater site they went to the brother and they took shahada subhanallah this is what happened yeah. so basically without them knowing they are actually making da'wah for islam these haters they are giving us the best advertisement because as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says in the quran karim Basically, this verse ends by saying that they misguide not those except for those who wish to be misguided. Mm -hmm. And the majority of mankind, unfortunately, as the other surah says, alas, are at loss. But however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses his servants, no matter what the haters do, and they come to the truth eventually. I used to argue with this brother and... Uh, Brother Abu Yazid is also a witness to that. I used to argue with him too. And subhanAllah, what happened in the end? That's this brother messaged me years later telling me that he accepted Islam. That's the point. That's Allahu Akbar. That's the point. Years that, later. That's years. The point. Yes, that's the point. Years later. Right? After you as an individual plant a seed. And this is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to guide those whom he chooses. And it's not for us to decide as Muslims that that person is so violent that they'll never accept Islam tomorrow. Let Correct. me tell you a story that I didn't intend to tell anyone. Okay, I have a a, 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 a peculiar relationship with Sam Shimon. Okay, a very peculiar situation uh, with, with Sam Shimon that we don't attack one another anymore. We used to. We used to. We used to go back and forth. He's called, you know, he's he said things about my mother and so forth. I have forgiven him and I've established a relationship with Sam Shimon in which we can talk with one another. Okay, and, uh, and and we we talk with one another in a in a respectful manner. He doesn't attack me. I don't attack him. And this is something that I see as a a means to to uh, to plant seeds. Uh, you know, and and to say, you know what, you know, if you can 
look at one Muslim and, and treat them respectfully and actually have, you know, show kindness to that individual, then you can do it to others. You can do it to others. And I and I repeat, in the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the brother had mentioned, Abu Jahl, you know, and but there was other there was others who who attacked Muslims, who who tortured Muslims that wind up accepting Islam. They became very prominent members of the and so are, are we as individuals supposed to say just because everyone else wants to, to you know let's do this and let's do that let's 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 meet their their ugliness with more ugliness well that's not no. what Allah says to do that's not what Allah says to do it takes someone to set a precedent and say you know what let me be the one as an individual Allah Akbar let me be the one who says you know what I know what this person says I know it, it hurts me it, it angers me but I'm going to be patient for the cause of Allah. I'm a soldier in the cause of Allah. And if that means that I have to endure listening to this nonsense and knowing what the, the effect that it has on people, this Islamophobia in the world, if it if it if it's if it's me that might be that one, it might be that one to reach that person in private conversations. However, let me be the one, O oh Allah. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if one person is guided through you. It's better than the universe and all that's within it. Can you imagine the effect of someone who takes an Islamophobe, a diehard Islamophobe, a leader of the, the Islamophobes, and, and uh, affects them to a point that they accept Islam? Or at least they change their rhetoric or they, they tone their, themselves down? It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. The brother just said that it took him years of, of doing dawah and doing these interactions and getting mad at, at one another sometimes. and But 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 the effort is... is the, the seeds were planted, and the, fi the feeling of com of someone coming back and saying, uh, "I just want to let you know that I accepted Islam." Uh, Allah Allah. I will be, brother, I will be leaving. Kenny. I will be leaving. I will be leaving in a few minutes. Can I just add one little word? Yeah, I sure. think his name. I, th I think it's, it's Craig White. Is it uh, uh, Craig White? Uh, the the one from the um, can't remember his ministry. Is it? But he was recently having uh, a lot of uh, discussion with Yasser Qadi and everything, and he changed his attitude a lot. Yeah. James White? No. James, James White. White. James White. James White. James White. Yeah. James White yeah. He changed his attitude a lot. Yeah. He's, he no longer insults Muslims. He's anti Sam Shimon now. He has problems with Sam yeah, Shimon yeah. And, and, and David Wood and everything. Yeah. If these he, people are willing, well, when they're having private conversations with Muslims, to carry on that and show that publicly that I have changed my attitude towards Muslims, I'm not going to assault Muslims anymore, I'm not going to attack Muslims anymore, then fine. It's okay, just do the same like James White does. Yeah. He tells his people now, no longer, you know, what's the point of, of throwing the, the moon god at, at the Muslims? It's false. What's That's the right. point of, 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 of raising the issue of Aisha with the Muslims? The, 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 all, all this is false. So if people like Sam Shamoon and whatever, you're having a private conversation with them and they are sincere that, look, I'll be okay to you and openly I will stop um, uh, uh, attacking uh, Muslims, we will have discussions or whatever, then fine, we have no yeah. problems with these people. Yeah, but we, haven't, these we haven't people, reached that, that stage no, no. yet, but it's a, it's yeah, yeah. a process. Just, let I'm me just, say what he said yesterday. Let me say what he said yesterday. Can I, yeah. can, I, can I just finish? Huh? Yeah, I'm ahead, just saying, if these, if these people have, have this, this intention in their minds, that okay, I'm okay with Brother Kenny or whatever, and I, I, I feel that like, you know, I like the brother and, and, and I like the other brother, I'm going to change my attitude from now, you know, the, the way I'm doing with Muslims and everything, fine. But if it's just a one-to-one -one thing that is going to be with you, only a friend of yours, and then he's going to attack other Muslims, and all other Muslims are stupid, and then this and that and the other, then, like, you know, there's, there's something wrong there. So yeah, well, you, you, yes, there's you, something wrong with, there's something yeah. wrong with that individual that would keep yes. doing that, right? Yes. But, mm -hmm. but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the intention of the Muslim and his yeah. role in the situation. Yeah, yes, of do course. We, do Muslim, we abandon yeah, it and say... On. No, no, yeah. the Muslim has to carry on. You, you have don't to give carry up. On. I think I think I think Yasser Qadi did, didn't give up on, 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 on James White. Yeah. He's still yeah. friends with him or whatever, and he changed his attitude. Let me yeah. let me tell you what happened yesterday. So can okay. I can I just he, say can I just say salam alaikum wa rahmatullah I have well, to go it's one thirty here. Stop. Sorry, brother Batty, again every time uh, you're on we, get, we never get the chance of talking. We come in late or whatever. But Jazakallah khair for having hosted me time, and uh, uh, brother Abu, okay. Abu Yazid Abu Yazid Jazakallah khair and, and uh, it's good to having been on the same platform as you. Inshallah, we'll have the opportunity of speaking again. It's one o'clock in the morning here, one twenty in the morning, and I work I work early tomorrow. So. Not a problem. Okay, so let me before we go to brother uh, brother Bati. So listen, 
yesterday, yesterday, Sam sent me a message via Facebook Messenger. And in the message, I can play it if I need need to. You know, we, we were addressing a, a, something we were talking about, but he says, he says in the this voice message that he left, the voice recording, he says, uh, he says that may God guide us to the to the truth. This is his words. May God, and I'll play it if I need to. May God guide us to the truth. If that means it's the Lord Jesus Christ, may you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. If that means it's Islam, let us be guided. Sam Shimon said that. Wow. Mashallah. Yes, that's that's prominent. That's something that that's listen. I, I wasn't planning to, to mention this, but I play the video. I, but you know, and I hope Sam doesn't get mad that I'm even mentioning this. But I, I I see this as progress, man. Because let's let's be honest. Let's be honest. We all have a bad side and a good side. We're not perfect. We all do things. We say things we shouldn't. We you know we're not perfect. Sam Shimon. These people are human beings. They're not perfect, and but they have a, they have a every human being has a good side to them, right? And if we can extract as Muslims, we try to use our, our good and fight evil with that which is better and so I try to extract that good from that individual to, to where that person says, if it's Islam, let us be guided and, and follow it with Amin. That's prominent. That's saying something. Right? And as Muslims, we have to do better, man. We we have to be the ones to say, you know what? I don't know where that what all that record's coming from, but we have to be ones as individuals to say, you know what? I'm not going to join the bandwagon, and I'm not going to meet ugliness with ugliness, and I'm not going to just because everyone else wants to attack. I'm not going to. I don't want to be that one to attack. Now, get, let's get let's get it straight. Let's get it straight right now. Let's 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 put it on the table. Uh, if we were in a, in, in a in a situation where we needed to to to, to throw them up and, and to defend somebody, you can be assured that Kenny Bomber is going to be at the front of the line. You can you can I, I promise you that. That's that's a fact. But Kenny Bomber is at the front of the line, Allahu Akbar, and so are these brothers on this panel. We're fighting against Islamophobia constantly. We're writing books. We're we're having engagements. We're having you know interfaith dialogue. We're having debates. We're you know putting out videos and so forth. We're fighting Islamophobia constantly. How dare you accuse someone of being a betrayer of the Muslim Ummah simply for, for following the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and trying to do what? Knock on the door of Abu Jal. Knocking on the door of Abu Jal, trying to call to Islam, you know, before it's too late, before the fire and the recompense of that 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 day where, where you know the people are gonna have faces that are glowing because they accepted the truth. Other people's faces are gonna be darkened because they know they rejected those knocks on the door by those who call themselves of the mu'minin, the, the true believers of Islam. So Allah Akbar. I know I got a little bit worked up there because there's there's things that happen behind the scenes that that okay. uh that, uh, you know, it's a constant bombardment of the shaitan coming and whispering and trying to, to distract us and trying to destroy the dawah. You know, dawah, dawah is fought on multiple fronts. These brothers are in the trenches. These brothers on this panel, Brother Abi Yazid wanting to come and talk about this book. Brother, B Brother Ziyad, Brother Bati always coming and supporting and adding his two cents. You know, listen, we're on the front lines of this battle, man. So how dare someone c come and accuse someone else of, of uh, you know, oh, you're being soft, you're being a punk, you're letting them punk you out. Are you kidding me? Do you know who I am? And, you know, Allah Akbar, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but that's not my demeanor. I, you know, I fight this battle every day. This is what I do every day. No, I don't get paid for it. These brothers don't get paid for it. So until you do what we do, until you know what we know, don't be bumping the lips. Right? Right? Allah Akbar, we have an obligation as Muslims to, to fight evil with that which is better. That's a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not Kenny Bomber saying it. That's what Allah says. Fight evil with brother, that which like is it. better. Yeah. Brother, I'm sorry I got to work up. No I'll problem. I'll talk all night about this. Go ahead, brother. Go most, ahead, brother. Definitely, most definitely we should, the the figureheads of, uh, you know, of Christian apologetics, they should be engaged. And we shouldn't have any fear or hesitation about engaging them, not just to not just to debate with them, but to actually call and invite them to Islam. Right. And no matter how many times they say no, continue to invite them to Islam. But also we have to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had big goals. Think about it. To be who he was 
where he was, the audacity from the, the standpoint of a, the non-Muslim world for someone like this to write letters to the heads of state during his time, to Najashi, to the, the head of the Byzantines, to the head of the Persians, to the deputy of the, uh, in, in Egypt. The audacity to do something like that. So we have to be audacious and confident that Allah will give us victory. Sometimes we, sometimes as Muslims, we are so beaten down that we don't think Allah will give us the victory if we put ourselves out there. It's just human nature. If you, you don't want to put yourself out there too far and fail and, and, and look like a failure. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left us an example where he did these type of things. So not only would I want to invite Sam Shimon to Al-Islam, we were both co-hosts on Jesus and Jesus and Muhammad. I came to Islam so he can come to the Islam. That's, that's not a big deal. But I want I want to talk to all I want to talk to the heads of the that's right the major um, the uh, the, uh, the major um, sets of Islam I mean of uh, sorry of Christianity um, I want to talk to the president of the uh, Southern Baptist Convention yes I want to talk to um, the the Bishop Bishop Elijah Hank Hankerson the head of Koji. I want to talk to the Pope or the bishops. I want to talk to whoever the head is of, of you know, the AME church or, or uh, um, the Missionary Baptist Church. Why? You don't think that we could you can have a conversation with the heads of these churches, with the bishops and the elders and the pastors? You can't go to your local local church and have a conversation with the pastor and the elders of that church. Subhanallah, when I left when I left Christianity. The church I was a member of, I got called in to meet with the pastor and the elders of the church. I was in a room with these individuals by myself, and I called them to Islam. And I defended my, my choice to come back to Islam. And I, their arguments against the, 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 the oneness of Allah and the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I gave answers and refutations for by myself against multiple people. People who are more educated than I was with master degrees and doctorate degrees in theology. It's not as hard as you think it is. That's right. It's not, in fact, it's not even hard at all. That's right. Do the, Muslims to... go, do the Muslims go to the biggest church in their city and say, I want to speak to whoever the president, the head or the, the pastor of this church is. I'm here to invite him to Islam. Allahu Akbar. That's right. Take the, take the big guns, man. What you, listen, it takes a soldier to, to strive in the cause of Allah. We're right in the, we're, this is the trenches right here, man. This is the trenches, right? And it takes, you know, the, the one who's willing to step out and say, you know what? Let me take through grenade. Let me go and let, let me try to reach this, this individual. Let me see if I can have an effect on him. If it, listen, if you want to cower away from that situation, or if you want to make excuses and claim that the person who's actually trying to engage in this decent conversation and build bridges, you're you're claiming that th that person is weak in some way? Come on, man, that's the very person in the example. That's that's what the prophet, peace be upon himself, that's what he did. He he wasn't, you know, he he was going to to the enemies of Islam, to the enemies, those ones killing the Muslims, you know. Uh, that that's that's who he was talking with. If if so, if you don't have a knowledge about this, pick up the autobiography of the Prophet peace be upon him. Read it, study it, study the surah, and and you know uh, this is what we're supposed to do, man. Go ahead, brother Ziyad. And a very very quick question: Who wouldn't be happy from the Muslims if one of these big haters one day says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an Muhammad? I personally. I personally, I would be very, I would, I would forgive them right away and be very happy, whether this is David Wood, Christian Prince, Sam Shimon, who else? Um, uh, please don't cringe at the next name, Hatun Taj. Well, but look at look at this situation, Bro brothers. Very, for, people who don't know brother, for people who don't know brother Abu Yazid, all right. Now, as he mentioned, he used to work hand in hand with Sam Shimon and David Wood. He used to speak against Islam. 
He used to debate Muslims. He's sitting here sh sharing the truth and the beauty of Islam and uh, having been one that was in, working with these guys, man. So how did this happen? It happened because someone planted the seed in his brother's mind. It happened because the brother had a willingness and a lot of, uh, found a way to open the door to his heart and his mind and, and for him to receive guidance. And it's not for us to declare. It's not. I'm, I'm going to repeat this. Listen closely. It's not for us to declare that a person like David Wood and Sam Shimon and Christian Prince will not accept Islam. That's for Allah to decide, man. It's our job to strive in the cause of Allah and try to keep fighting that battle. That's jihad. Being patient, being patient, enduring, asking Allah, oh, you know, oh Allah, let this be the bridge of understanding for this person. Let my interactions with this individual, let it be what guides this individual, oh Allah. Mm -hmm. Please accept my efforts mm -hmm. and intentions. And guess what? If that person doesn't accept the guidance, you still get the blessings as, as though they did. And oh. if they do, it's even better. And if they if they're guided, imagine someone like Sam Shimon accepting Islam after all the things that he said. It's possible. Nothing's you know. Allah says, "Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah." Right. And if we know that Allah can do all things, then surely He can change the mind and the heart of a person that 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 speaks negatively about Islam. Right. It's possible. Imagine the effect of that. It would explode. He may become the next sp spokesperson for Islam. He might become, become a, a great a Muslim uh, a, a, a apologist. He might be an imam at some point. Who knows, man? Imagine how many of his imagine how many of his followers would Absolutely. follow him and accept Islam. Imagine the blessings if that would happen. Absolutely. Any, what's the name of the other guy? Uh, Roger. I can't remember his name. Robert. Um, Anthony, uh, Rogers? Anthony, Anthony Rogers. Anthony Rogers. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Anthony Rogers. Yeah. The crook. The crook. Well, Allah, you're right, Aki. Let me tell you something. Um, West Africa, the millions of Muslims in West Africa. People, some people erroneously believe that Islam came to West Africa through jihad. That somehow, some air, uh, an Arab army came, conquered West uh, West Africa, and forced people to become Muslims. And that's not true. What? Proof at all. What actually happened was that there were Muslims who were traders who would come into West Africa to trade and do business. And then they would have audiences with the leaders of the, the Ghanaian empire. And they called them to the Islam and the leaders accepted Islam. And when the leaders accepted Islam, the whole entire population accepted Islam. Allah That's, Allah That's a perfect example right there. I mean, come on, man. We, this, listen, this is a spiritual warfare, man. This is a battle. This is, Allah, this is jihad. I hope that when Justin Trudeau was in London, Ontario, when they were remembering the family, the Muslim family, the innocent family that were murdered by a terrorist, I and I know there's some good brothers in, in London, I've met a few of them, that somebody called Justin, Justin Trudeau to Islam. Did somebody put a, a Quran in the hand of Justin Trudeau? Did this, this someone have a conversation about Al-Islam with Justin Trudeau. That's right. Don't be intimidated by that. Yeah. Who is Justin? SubhanAllah. I have respect for him as the head of, head of <clears throat> Canada. But who is he compared to Allah and, and his messenger? So Allah, who he was so low. That's right. Assalamu alaikum. Brother to all Bati, go ahead, brother. brother. I want to work with you. Sorry, brother Bati. Uh, uh, Assalamu as alaikum to brother Kenny, <laughs> brother Abu Yazid, uh, brother, uh, brother, brother, brother Abu Huraira, and uh, sister is already here as well. Salam to everybody. Uh, I can see brother Kenny today is quite passionate. It's a little bit different. Uh, topic gone to different direction. We started with uh, Brother Abu Yazid. My apology, Brother Abu Yazid. We will, inshallah, come back to that topic. I've got a few words. I'm listening very carefully. That uh, Dawa is a, a form of uh, a jihad as well. And also, if we love our brothers, we don't want to see them burning in the hellfire. And all, all you brothers up there, doing this work as good deed because this good work puts shaitan in trouble 
Shaitan is the one who's taking everyone away from the straight path. And you guys are the fighters against Shaitan, keeping everybody, trying to bring everybody back to the true path, straight path. So the brothers, this is the battle. It's a battle is against Shaitan. It's a battle against, uh, against, look at beautiful, look at uh, my brother Kenny, for example, brother Abu Yazid, Ab Abu Herrera, they look. Why they are fighting? What for they are fighting? They're not getting, getting paid for it. They are not having any personal interest out of it. They are not, uh, they, they are just lay men. Why they are so worried about me, you or Shamoon or Sam or anybody else? Why they are worried? Because they were your once friends. They are your colleagues. They are your human being, fellow beings. They want everyone to join the right path, inshallah, and they want you to be saved from the hellfire. They want you to be saved from the shaitan. This is the cause. Ka shaitan said from the day one that I will take many with me. So this is the battle. It's not battle against personalities. It's not battle against you or me. We are trying to do the right thing, what we have been told. And this is what it is. And majority of uh, faiths, they are looking for salvation. Mm -hmm. But where we find ourselves, uh, Allah has given us this, this called brain too, not just the soul and spirit. So wherever we find the right path, we need to bring everybody back to the right path. And if we die doing the right things, inshallah, we are, inshallah, we are all will be successful. And this is the what we are trying to achieve success. Small means, small dollar signs, or these means will we will leave behind. Nobody gonna carry these sort of things in the grave. And my all beautiful brothers, I am not I, I'm the least educated. And mashallah you all brothers doing the why my brother Abu Yazid wants to go to the heads. Why? Because he wants to make sure when somebody on a position understand the, what is exactly the right path, majority understand, oh, that's fine. We are on the right path. So this is battlefield not against those people who are, don't believe in us. It's a battlefield against Shaitan right. who is taking away so all of us sometimes he's taking away us, uh, us away from the right path. Oh, so thank you very much, brother. You, brother. Kenny, you, very much, you, you, you had inflict, inflicted some sort of passion in the panel. <laughs> so it has to come out a little bit from me too. Absolutely. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. And we shall back. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Uh, and uh, brother, you guys started with the topic with the, um, with the book. Uh, the gentleman who was Kadiani and then he became, I'm not sure if once uh, somebody is a true Muslim can seek Allah and end up somewhere else, but that's a different subject. But the book uh, we were discussing, inshallah, we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. Very interesting topic, inshallah. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna, we're certainly going to get back to that. Sister Katarina, assalamu alaikum. Is your mic working better now? Well, alaikum salam. It seems to be intermittently working. Uh, sorry, guys. Salam alaikum, um, brother Ziad, brother Abu Yazid. Nice to see you, brother Muhammad. All of you guys. It's always a pleasure. And brother Kuni, of course. Um, I'm in t actually in Tennessee right now, and I'm using my my phone. So it's the mic is just. I don't have headphones with me either, so the mic is just very cracky. So uh, sorry about that. I tuned in to just the very end. And I always love to hear Brother Abu Yazid talk about uh, talk about Islamic history and things like that. He's a very, mashallah, very, very educated and informed brother um, when it comes to that. And I, sorry, I came in the middle and I sort of interrupted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen some more to catch, to catch more of the conversation. But I didn't, I, I sort of. Uh, sorry, I, di I didn't mean to interrupt the flow. It's okay. All right. Thank Please you, dear sister. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. So, uh, yeah, brother uh, Abiyazi, let's get back to it. And uh, 
No. Um, and see how we can tie this into this whole message. Obviously, we're dealing with the Islamophobia, and it comes in different forms. It, sometimes it comes in written con written form. It comes in uh, videos and uh, so forth. So let's get back to it, brother. Let's pick it up. First of all, my, the first problem I have with this book is the cover. Yeah, I, Listen, I agree. The cover just opposes Islam and against Christianity in a kind of um, you know clash of civilizations type thing going on. You got a, you got the crescent and the cross. I see that. Each other. No God. Mm -hmm. But one, so the, so it's, it's kind of throwing down a challenge. There's no God but one, Allah or Jesus. Yeah. So it's like, or either you believe in Allah and worship Him, or you believe in worship Jesus. And cause there can only be one. Yeah. And this is falsehood. This is falsehood. Yeah. The lie. First of all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Arabic word for the supreme being. Uh, if I got to say it a million yeah. different times, I'll say it a million different times. This fo the, the Islamophobes and those who are affected by it have to stop this big lie. That somehow the, the Muslims worship a God called Allah, whereas Christians worship a different God called God or Jesus or Yahweh or Yah or Yahuwashi or whatever name is supposed to be popular nowadays, or that Jews and Christians were have a, a certain God, the God of the Bible, and Muslims have another separate God, you know, the God of Islam or the Quran or Allah or the or the Kaaba, there is one, there, there is no God but one. Yes, the universe, this material world was created by one being. And that one being is the only being worthy of worship. And guess what? That one being, he is the Lord, the God, the cherisher, the sustainer, the most merciful, the most just for every living being, for every human being. God does not belong to a tribe. This is tribalism. Mm -hmm. God is not trademarked by Jews. God is not trademarked by the Catholic Church or the uh, Reformation Church. You don't own God. That's God right. doesn't belong to Europe. <laughs> People right. in the Galapagos Islands, they have one God. I don't care if they worship idols. They have one God. Hindus have one God. They have an erroneous belief that Somehow God is, is mixed in with the creation and they can create idols and, and the essence of God is inside the idol. So they worship the, the idol to get closer to God, but they still only have one creator. So, so don't stop telling people this, 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 this idea that Muslims worship another God. And then what some Islamophobes will do, they'll take this and run and they'll even say, well, the Muslims, they worship Satan. The Muslims worship Satan and we worship the true God. And that's what fuels the in individuals like that 20 year old terrorist to take their truck and r run over a family of five because he sees them as dehumanized human beings who worship Satan, who are against the Trinity, who are against Jesus. We as Muslims believe in Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, and we believe in Jesus, peace be upon him as a messenger because he's a material being. So let's stop this right now. Can we please stop this? I, I challenge Sam Shimon, David Wood, Christian Prince, Anthony Davis, and a slew of other people that I'm not going to sit and name. I challenge you to stop doing this. Your, your rhetoric is dangerous. And if you want to have a conversation about theology, and what's the proper theology? How should we properly understand God? How should we properly worship God? We can do that. But stop trying to make people think that Muslims do not worship Almighty God. Stop doing that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lie. It's, a, it's, 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 it's fraudulent information. So the cover itself is fraudulent. And then when you go into the book, he continues with this, these fraudulent ideas because Immediately in the introduction, he begins to he he says what I just said. 
He says there are multiple meanings and uses of the word Allah. It can mean the Muslim God. It can mean God in general in the Arabic language. Allah is used by Arab-speaking Christians. Allah is used by Arab-speaking Christians in Palestine. There are Arab-speaking Christians, and they call upon Allah. Oh, Zionist Christian. So he says what he, he says, he makes this statement in the prefix. Before beginning, the title of the book could use some explanation. Both Islam and Christianity are monotheistic, believing there is no God but one. But they differ fundamentally on who is God, Allah or Jesus. No, that is not what we we that's not what we differ on. We don't differ on names. We don't differ on names. We differ about who is worthy of being worshipped alone. We differ about monotheism, tawhid, as we say in Islam, using the Arabic term. What we say is that Almighty God is to be worshipped alone without any partnerships. And we don't degrade the station and the majesty of Almighty God. Almighty God is perfect, complete as he is. He doesn't need to incarnate and come into the world and die for anybody's sins. If he wanted to forgive sins, he could easily forgive. He could forgive the sins of every human being that is on the earth, past, present, and future, if that's what he wanted to do. There's, no, there's nothing blocking him. Somehow that somehow being an immaterial being blocks him from forgiving people. So he has to take on material uh, material body. A human nature, and that's not good enough. He has to die on a cross in order to forgive people of their sins. That's the real issue. So, no, it's not Jesus or it's not Allah versus Jesus. That's not the issue. The issue is this whole this Islamic monotheism versus polytheism. That's right. That's the issue. And if anybody else want to speak on that real quick, you can do it. Go ahead and do it before we go any further. Well, yeah, I mean the the whole idea of. Uh having a law or Jesus on the cover is for one, I mean, it's illogical within itself in that we know good uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. He prayed to another, but you're putting a stipulation on uh, a law or Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus, peace be upon him in the Bible says that the father is greater than I, the father is greater than all. So why in the world would you put the second man of the quote unquote Trinity in line uh, as though, I mean, that that's, it doesn't make sense. We, we know that the, the God of the Bible, as far as the Yahweh, that he did not pray to Jesus. Jesus, in, in fact, prayed to him. And so, peace be upon him. And so, it's illogical to, uh, to even put the name Jesus, peace be upon him, on that cover as though there is a, a competition between Allah and Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, it's just, it's far fetched. And of course, that's that's playing upon the Christian mentality in that, you know, the uh, Christians who believe that Jesus is not only God himself, but the son of God at the same time in this cognitive dissonance. Let me bring brother Mustafa from Dawah Connect, I almost said Connect, Dawah Connected uh, to the panel. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Wa alaikum salam, brother. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Beautiful. Brother Abu Yazid, salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And everybody else on the panel. Jazakallah. Yeah. Carry on, brothers. Jazakallah. Okay, brother. Thank you. Well, yeah. All right, brother. Abiy yeah. go ahead. So on page 26, he makes this statement. Of course, the most obvious is that Allah is not triune. Correct. Whereas the one Christian God, here we go again with that, you know, this, this tribalism, whereas the one Christian God subsets in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we have to ask again, this tribalism, God is not owned by a particular religion. God is not owned by a particular group of people. God is the creator of everyone, everyone, every being can call out to God at this moment. God hears them. God cares more than you could even imagine about you calling. God is de absolutely delighted when anyone in, on the earth calls out to him in need he is there to hear <laughs> <laughs> <Legit>. <laughs> so 
I live I, I live not too far from uh, a um, an airport, and I think they're doing some type of uh, some uh, Blue Angels today or something. Okay, like all right. So, um, so that's that's one thing. Number two, that's correct. Allah is not triune, but guess who else is not triune? YHWH Yahweh. He's not triune. The the Jews whom the Torah and the Tanakh belong to would agree with us lockstep without any disagreement that the creator of the heavens and earth is not a triune being who subsets in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, this language and this type of, um, this language is nowhere in the Bible. And it certainly is not in the so-called Old Testament, which was the uh, the renaming of the the Torah and the Tanakh. You go through the Torah and, and the Tanakh, you will not hear about a, tri a trinity or a father or a son or a horse or a Holy Spirit. Uh, in the first commandment, we're told not to have any, any other, any other gods. Have no other gods besides me, me, singular, singular, personal pronoun, me. Don't have another God besides me. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And some and some people will try to argue by change. Is people argue by changing the meaning of words or corrupting the meaning of words by saying the ichad in the Shema means a, a compound of um, a compound, compound one. A compound of one. But a compound re it, it involves an amalgamation of different parts. Is that not what a compound is? Yeah. So does God have parts? From, no. Christian the, from, a, from the Christian theology, there's the theology of the, the divine simplicity of God, that God is a God without parts. God is his being, and his being is one. The attributes of God are only aspects of that one being. God has no parts. So how can it be a compound? Unity. A compound unity is a amalgamation of various elements and parts put together. Like if you remember, if you were a kid, you watched the you would watch the cartoon Voltron. You had the lions, the lion robots, and then they would transform and come together and make Voltron. That's, That's not right. God. That's not how God operates. That's not the nature of Almighty God. God is not a mixture of three different persons mixed together to form one God. In that language, in that type of that ideology is found nowhere in the Torah and, to, and the Tanakh that we have today. You can't find it anywhere. In fact, you can't even find it in the New Testament. But that is a that 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 whole that whole ideology is the product of human imagination and human intellect from the church fathers. Because they the followers of Paul insisted on having a high Christology like their leader, Paul. And that high Christology became corrupt, corrupt, corrupt till Jesus became the focal point of worship instead of the Father. And in order to justify making Jesus the focal point of worship, you constantly had to have Christian, you had to invent something called Christian apologetics. The invention of Christian apologetics was to justify worshiping a human being, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So you had to come up with these ideas of the Trinity. You had to come up with three persons. You had to define the three persons. You had to fight amongst, the church fathers had to fight amongst each, amongst each other to decide how many persons were in the Godhead. Because the father and son were automatically recognized, but the, the Holy Spirit wasn't recognized. It was at the last minute the Holy Spirit was finally voted in to be a part of the Trinity. But go to a church, any church, who is being in, invoked for worship? One minute, it's Jesus. The yeah. next minute, it's the Holy Spirit. Next minute, it's the Father. And sometimes it, sometimes within the same prayer that happens. Inside, yeah. the, same per, in, inside the same song. Yes, same song, same prayer. I've heard it time and time and time again. And you're That's telling right. me you, you can sit there and do that knowing in the Bible, the first commandment, the, the first thing that God wanted to tell Moses and his people was not to have another God besides me. That you can you can 
read that and know that and still worship three persons with a clear conscience? Nothing, it doesn't bother you about that. It should bother you about that because the theme of all the prophets and messengers from Adam to Abraham, peace be upon him, to Mo Musa, Moses, peace be upon him, David, Solomon, up to Jesus, all, up, all the way up to the last and final prophet, the prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is monotheism. Mm -hmm. Monotheism is the good news. Not the worship of a human being, not human sacrifice, not blood and body. Monotheism is the, is the good news. So I, I completely disagree with this. When he says, you know, that Allah is not a, a triune being, whereas the one Christian God is three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The whole issue is about monotheism. I wish the bill was still alive so I could I could tell him. I could. I wish he could be on this Zoom. He could be here on this platform so I could tell him. But he's not. So I'm telling any Christian who is, who is watching, the issue is monotheism. And when you have pure monotheism, and you have to re-examine these theologies that were created by the church fathers that were instituted by the Catholic Church and then reinstituted by the, the reformers until the Christianity split into how many de denominations and set, sets that it is currently, it still has the same root. You were indoctrinated with these ideas. I was indoctrinated with these ideas. I understand the struggle of wanting to cling to these ideas in face of data. But the data and the ideas do not match with each other. They contradict each other. You, you can't have a compound unity because a compound unity is a mixture of different parts amalgamated into one. God it does not have parts. God is absolutely one and unique. You can't have, you can't say you have three different distinct persons. The father is not the son. The son is not the father. The father and the son are not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father or the Son. Distinct persons and claim you do not have three gods. Each person is supposed to be 100% God. So the Holy Spirit is 100% God. The Son is 100% God. The, the Father is supposed to be 100% God. You say God had to die for our sins. All three didn't go and die. One person, the Son, wouldn't supposedly die. That's one third of God dying. Two thirds stayed alive. And then when you get it, when you and when you start asking questions, you start just asking common sense questions. How does God die in the first place? You start getting into trouble, but you can avoid all this nonsense, all these things that don't make sense. You can avoid a guilty conscience. You can avoid doctrines that don't line up with each other and make sense by just embracing monotheism and that's all that is that's all that islam is calling to islam is not calling to you to worship some foreign god from uh, some desert it's not calling you to worship the black stone that's propaganda islam is calling you to worship the supreme being alone i don't know if anybody want to speak on that no brother you're doing a great job it's i mean that's uh, you know, these, these common misconceptions, I mean, it's an ongoing narrative that we hear. Uh, matter of fact, during this stream, someone early in the stream asked the question, uh, such, asked some kind of question, but followed it by, uh, uh, why is it that you, all of you uh, kiss, kiss, uh, kiss the rocks? <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're why are people so obsessed with that? No. Why are people so obsessed with that? Oh, the matter of fact is, lo and behold, uh, lo and behold, uh, here's the character here. It doesn't make sense uh, to kiss and grope stones. Well, I'm not sure who you're suggesting does that, but uh, uh, nobody gropes a stone. Yeah, no. Who who gropes a stone? Tell me who who's the person who's the person that you know that gropes the stone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Why doesn't that person come come and talk to us live on that instead of just talk, typing in the? You're invited. Explain to us. See the it's thing is, brothers. Simple. See it's the thing is, brothers. That I always say, brothers, that if I'm into Jazakallah, sorry, just to say that I always say, brothers, that 
the fact that the Jews, like you said, Akhi, Wallahi, it's beautiful. Everything that you said is just bang on about monotheism, how how the Bible promotes the worship of one God, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, just promotes constantly promoting to Musa alayhi salam, the worship of one God, one God, one God, no other deity but God alone. And and the, so here's the thing, if, if the Jews and Muslims, as we believe in one God, if we were to, if, if we somehow were worshiping stones and kissing stones, then the Jews should be first condemned by the Christians for kissing the Western wall. You know what I mean? They should be the first to be kissing the Western wall because they do it every day. <laughs> and yeah. they even put prayers in the crack because according to the Talmud, if you put a prayer in the crack, it goes directly to God. So, you know, this is the, what they're doing. And Jesus says that you should, your righteousness should be more, far more better than the righteousness of the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were Talmudic. So, and, and uh, obey and listen to what the Jews tell you, the Pharisees and the scribes tell you because they sit in the seat of Moses. So again, we, we see that, look, there is no, subhanallah, kissing a stone or rock out of reverence is not prohibited anywhere in the Old Testament. Jesus says, according to Revelation, he will give a white stone to his believers. Now, if stone is a problem, then what is this white stone that you Christians will be re receiving in the book of Gen uh, Revelation chapter 1? Uh, so, I, I, you know, this is a problem that they have, and I, I don't know why they always bring this, is this obsession they have. On this, and they have no ilm on this. Thank you, brother. Great points. Great points. Great points. Every day, you can see, you can go on online right now and see a video of Jews, not even just Jews, heads of state, Obama, Trump, going to the Western Wall, kissing the kissing the wall, kissing the stones on the wall, crying on the stones on the wall, slipping prayers in between the cracks. But see, this shows you the hypocrisy. That shows you hypocrisy. When you don't, you don't hold a principle and you don't apply a principle to everyone in the same exact way that makes you a hypocrite. That's right. That makes you a hypocrite. Don't say anything about Muslims touching of the black stone or kissing the black stone if you're not going to say anything to the Jews. And to the Christians, the Christian Zionists who imitate them. Because it's the same exact action. If it's wrong, if, if it's so, so called, it's so wrong in your eyes and so egregious and idolatrous, then it's, it's wrong and egregious and idolatrous, and idolatrous to them as well. Brother, Brother Abu Yazid, let me ask you a question. How many, how many Christians uh, have you seen? Uh, Take the cross around the necks and, and kiss uh, Jesus it a, hanging, I've hanging it on the cross. A thousand times. Mm -hmm. I've seen it a thousand times. Not the only that, every single every Christian church do they not take the the uh, the cracker or the wafer and put it in their mouth as a ceremony that they're consuming the body of Christ, just like the pagans used to do with their pagan gods. So tell me, tell me, Mister Blackstone, man, when you come up here. Tell me what's so good. Why is reverencing a black, giving reverence to the black stone is that egregious and idolatrous, but giving reverence to a cracker, yeah. not? And the Holy Sepulchre, he, don't forget that in the um, in Jerusalem, they kiss the slab that Jesus' blood was on there. They wipe on it. This is going on now in Jerusalem. Every day it happens. Christians go there themselves. All these idols are there. They don't say anything. I visited Jerusalem. I saw the empty tomb. I visited the place Jesus was born, everything. And they see all of these idols there, Catholics, Catholicism, and every, whatever's going on, kissing the stone slab that the um, Jesus was supposed to be laid on. The blood is there. They wipe on it. They kiss it. I have photos of it, videos on it. And then it's okay for that. Yet they don't want to talk about that anymore because, oh, no, no, they're Christians, but it's okay. I don't know if they're Christians or not. Why do you not stand up and tell them what you're doing is, uh, um, you know, is wrong? But you're not. Because, again, you guys are, uh, uh, this is hypocrisy. You know, you, you guys are doing it yourself, man. You kiss the stone slab every day. You know, and it's just hypocrisy from their side. Bro. Wallahi, this is just amazing what, you know. So the Allah, I just thought about in every church, in, in every evangelical church, at the end of the sermon, they ask the people, who would like to come to the altar? Mm. Who would like to come to the altar 
and ask for forgiveness and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And people come to the altar, kneel at the altar, put their heads on the altar and pray. Yeah. Is that not is that is that idolatry? Yeah. You're you're performing an act of worship at a, a platform, a, a, a altar, a stage. Why is that not? How is that any different than what is done during Hajj when people visit and try to touch the black stone? How is that any different? It's actually not different at all. But again, you people have been brainwashed with these these Islamophobic ideologies. They're so in in the, inundated with hatred. It blinds it blinds your ability to have logical thinking because you want to hate so bad. Subhanallah. The Jews the Jews never say this is what I learned as well, brothers. That the Jews they don't bring this black stone regarding Muslim kissing because they they kiss the mezuzah. <laughs> they kiss the mezuzah when they, uh, you know, when they go out. They will kiss the Torah scrolls. You know, I mean, kissing is something which is common in Judaism. I have a list of the kind of things they, they you know, they, they 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 will they will kiss. And so it's normal for for an action again out of reverence. No problem kissing a stone. And remember, the black stone is not. It's small little pebbles, as well. So you guys are making it sound like you know we've got this big rock or something, and it's something. That, you know, half, these people think, half of these people think the Kaaba itself is the black stone. Yeah, yeah, that's what they think. But yet the Kaaba was were broken and it was rebuilt and it was broken and it was rebuilt. You know, so again, I, I don't understand what logics they are using. We we worship Allah alone. This is what we declare day in, day out, that we worship. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Subhanallah. So kissing is not a problem. Uh, and the Bible does not prohibit kissing a stone or brick out of reverence. If it did, the Jews would be the first not to kiss the Western wall. But they kiss it. Don't think they don't do it. So they are the first kafir or mushrik or, you know, the, the idol worshippers first. But they don't again. So, like I said, it's, it's a very bad argument to bring, guys. Don't never bring that on Muslims. Yes, yeah, so to, to make this clear, Allah is absolutely timeless. He's immaterial. He doesn't exist on the face of the earth or up in the sky either. He's above his creation. Something which uh, we're all missing is song. kissing is an act of worship. Then everyone, then half the planet is worshiping the other half because we, we kiss our spouse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. This is hypocrisy. Come on. You're never going to find anywhere in the Quran or in the Hadith or upon the lips of any scholar for the last 1500 years, anything that it, that endures divinity in the black stone. Exactly. It's not, it's not a deity. It's not divine. No. It's a ritual that we do. Black stone went missing for 20, uh, something, 30, you know, something years. Remember, during the yeah. A47, it went missing, it was taken. And then, you know, we were still doing, the Muslims were still doing Tawaf, and they were still doing Hajj, but Blackstone wasn't there. And then they, you know, after reconciliation, I think they got it back again. But again, it was missing. And your point? You know, and touching well, the Blackstone is not even a pillar of Hajj. Exactly. It's not, you just made the point, it's not even a pillar of the Hajj. If you don't, if you can't do it, if you can't get to it, you continue with the Hajj, and your, your Hajj is accepted. So you're, Again, this is a straw, arg straw man argument. You're trying to create an argument because the reason why, let me tell you, you Christians, the reason why your Christian apologists feed you that argument because they don't want to talk about the Trinity. They don't want to talk about the Trinity. They don't want to talk about the deity of Christ. They don't want to talk about how is it that you, you claim that God is a, an amalgamation of different compounds put together. So they know it's a losing argument. So to avoid it, they try to throw the ball back into the to the the count to the side of the Muslims and try to drum up some idea of there being some type of idolatry in Islam, and they pick at straws to find whatever they can to make that argument to take the heat off themselves. Yeah. And brothers, let me ask you a question: Have any of you ever prayed to the Kaaba? I'm not no. talking about praying in that no. direction. No, 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 no. no. So, 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 kissing it—is there any real significance behind it other than no. reverence for for being in that location? If a Muslim wanted to come and kiss the Kaaba or touch the Kaaba, 
Is it not brother. just a sign of reverence for? Uh, yeah. yeah, brother Kenny, brother Kenny. Let's not forget the famous story that the Prophet وسلم, when he was ordered by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to tell the believers to change the direction of prayer temporarily for, towards Jerusalem, in order yeah. for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to prove a point that this is you're not praying to the Kaaba. And when they did that, and after a while, he said, "Okay, then we to revert back to the original." direction of prayer but in order to prove to the believers that you're not praying to the kaaba you're yeah. praying in the direction of the kaaba as in unity it's the direction and again so if and another thing that i've always said as well that subhanallah if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god almighty the the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in between them if allah asked you to kiss a stone or a brick or even your laptop this is Allah asking you to do it. Just the way Allah asked the angels to prostrate, to do um, sujood to Adam alayhi salam, Allah is asking. So if Allah has already allowed it for us to kiss the black stone or, or the black stone, this is not shirk in any way. This is not um, 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 any sort of kufr in any way or we're not doing anything which is um, idolatry because Allah is allowing it. So, uh, so I asked the Christian, if God asked you to do this, is it going to be wrong? He said, no, if God says it to me, it's fine. I said, exactly. So for us, we are not doing anything idolatry because Allah is okay. You know, it's Allah is allowing us to, you know, for, for, for us to go ahead with it. Not that Allah is asking us to worship the stone or take the stone as a deity. This is what Allah is forbidding us in the Quran. It's all and over nor, the Quran. Yeah, nor is Allah, do, do we believe that Allah is in the Kaaba? No, no, so no. Let's, let's make that clear. That's the, that's the thinking of the... The pagans, but Islam, no, Allah's not in the Kaaba. This is just have the house of worship nor, for Allah. Nor does the nor does the black stone represent Allah. That's no. right. No, absolutely. Pa, not. Pa, what is Pa Kofi Emin Pool? Why haven't you come up yet? You're still talking in the in the um in the chat, and you have an issue with this. Why don't you come up here and and and, and uh, discuss it with us? You said if if you saw me kissing a golden statue, would you say I'm a monotheist? It depends on why you were cold. You were kissing it, first of all. Yeah. Number two, do you not take communion? You not just you don't just kiss the wafer. You consume it, and it represents it represents your God. Digest it. You digest your God in that sense. Literally, you have a ritual where you you take a object that represents your God and put it into your mouth. Yeah. Which one is more egregious? Come up here and, and explain. It's, I, I want to hear. Tell me either. Come up here and explain it. Which one? The the black stone doesn't represent Allah. Allah is not inside the black stone. No. You eat the wafer, and if you're a Catholic, you believe that it's not just the wafer. It's transformed by the prayers of the of the priest. It's transformed into the very body of Jesus. So it literally becomes your God. And if you're if from re some reform religion. You believe it's a representation yeah. of your God. You touch it, pick it up, put it in your mouth and digest it. And then you drink the blood, which also is a represent representation of your blood. Exactly. How many times a day do we do we actually pray to the blacks? How many times do we even say the name Blackstone in Arabic or English? How many times a day do we even do this? You know, you're making it sound Zero. like... Do you see what Zero. I'm saying? I've never done that. So when we use Surah Al-Fatihah, we say, Iyaka na budu wa Iyaka na In you alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. Now, how many times can can you show me or any one of us brothers that Muslims call to the black stone every day? I mean, the last couple, today and yesterday, we were talking about the black stone. Other than that, I don't remember the last time I was bringing the black stone up. It was probably a few months back when a Christian brought it up. But other than that, I don't utter the name black stone. There's no need for me to. Because the black stone does not, like the uh, Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu said, that this black stone doesn't cause me, uh, um, benefit me or harm me. I only saw Rasulullah Sallam kisses. That's why I'm doing it. I'm just paraphrasing. I shouldn't paraphrase the hadith, but there is a hadith on this. And, no. and again, so we, we know from the uh, from the hadith that the black stone cannot benefit anyone or can do any, uh, um, can um, do any, um, you know, um, sorry, misdeeds or anything. Nothing will happen through the black stone. Here's so, the next. Now this individual, he, now that he's yeah. done with the the black stone, he doesn't want to come up and speak about the black stone. Now, now he wants to talk about we speak to Muhammad in our prayers every time. No, we don't. Salutation. No, no, no we don't. Waste of time. Waste of time. 
<laughs> no, we that don't. is very. It's like it's like. Let me throw out anything. It's, Where it's, do you people get this nonsense from? Let me throw out whatever I can throw out. If this doesn't work, okay, that didn't work. Let me reach in my bag and find something else. Let me throw this out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me throw out every cliche and every trope, anti-Islamic trope that I can, to try to damage you. It's not damaging us. You're not hurting our feelings. Nobody's crying. Okay, nobody, he's, so he's backstage. Nobody, I guarantee you, nobody in the chat is going to convert to Christianity because of you throwing out these little talking points. Let me bring him on, brother Abu Yazid. He's backstage. So, okay, okay, okay. Uh, coffee, whatever, however you say, uh, welcome to the panel. What's going on, man? Yeah, like uh, I said, I don't have much, much data. I'll get more data on the 22nd, so I, I won't be able to stay long. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so what makes you, uh, what makes you think that uh, the one that we pray to the, the Kaaba or that we pray to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What, what, makes you, what makes you think that? Well, I'm not saying you pray to the Kaaba. I never said that. But okay, um, with the with the um, the prayers you speak to Muhammad in, like the final part of the the prayers. Says who? Make sure, make sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, what, you, you can. You can train. What, what, what are the words that are said in those in the final part of the prayer? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm gonna <laughs> mispronounce the Arabic, but you know. We know, know the Arabic. Say English. We know the Arabic. We know the Arabic. We know the Arabic. You say the English. What is yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 yeah, you translate it for me. No, no, you uh, translate. Aslam no, no, because I don't speak Arabic. You guys speak Arabic. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You made the claim, brother. You made the claim. You made the claim. Tell us. Because we don't do that. You made the claim. We know the Arabic. Hey, you know what I'm saying, man. But so explain to us how we do that. You know what you're saying, yeah. but, but yeah. So in English, what, what does it say? What does it say? We know the Arabic and English. We want to know what you know. So then we can get we can extract what your understanding behind it is. Tell us what the English means and how we are speaking to him directly. I would like to know. This is going to yeah, be interesting. Maybe we can clear out a misconception. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let him speak. So you say, Assalamu alaikum, ahun nabi, and salamu means peace, and nabi means prophet. So you're saying, peace be upon you, O prophet. Okay. 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 And? Do you know what it says right before that? In English, uh, it says, all compliments are to Allah, something like that. Say it again. Yes, go ahead again. All praise to Allah, something like that, right? Yes, so all prayers through words, action, and sanctity are for Allah only. So, all prayers mm -hmm. through words, action, and sanctity that mean, mean your, your, your intention. So, your words being spoken during the prayer, your actions of prostrating during the prayer, and your intentions during the prayer are for Allah only. And then peace be upon you, O Prophet. This is actually a prayer to Allah sending blessings upon the Prophet, which we do all the time. Peace be upon it. So even when so we say guys, uh, when Prophet you, Jesus' sorry, name, sorry. we say peace be upon him. Yes. yes. Out of love and respect for all the Prophets. No. So the, but the very first thing said there is all prayers through words, action, and sanctity or you can say intention, uh, depending how you, you know, uh, the translation of the Arabic, uh, the English that you want to utilize, but all prayers, the words, action, and intentions are for Allah only. Uh, and also, brother, also he said, he, he forgot the first part of the, I mean, you've said the first part, I mean, the, the, the durood itself, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So, so what do you understand by that? Go on, go on. So this is how we're going to start off by reading, right? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. How, how, how would you understand? How, explain, the, translate that in English. Allahumma yeah, salli ala Muhammad. Say, I don't know. It means, oh Allah, Allah, yeah, oh Allah, yeah. Yeah, oh Allah bless. bless Muhammad. Oh Allah, you, tell me. Oh Allah, bless. So oh who are Allah, we talking to? Allah. Yeah. So oh, Allah, bless friend. Muhammad. Yeah. No, it means, let me ask you, let me it's, ask, it's, let me ahead, ask, ask you, who has the ability to grant Muhammad or anyone else peace. I thought Salah means prayer. No, it's, it's 
No, the, 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 what you what you what you read is asking that peace be upon Muhammad. Do you understand? Do you understand that part? But it says you are perfect. Who's the you? Says, peace be you upon the prophet. Allah, Allah to grant his blessings to peace, salutations, blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's what it means. I don't understand. This is the kind of gone. Carry on. Wait, listen. 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 It says you are a prophet. Okay, listen, do me a favor, do me a favor, um, clean your ears first and listen to us clearly what we're going to say, because we don't want to obviously go derogatory in this place. Um, when you are translating the Arabic to English, where exactly are you getting this translation from? Where, where, where are you getting it from? Yeah, I went to the uh, daily prayers, like a website. Send the website on the private chat. Let's have a look at what you're doing. Send the website. So let's see what we are you're looking at. Because it seems like you don't have a clue. Oh, you, what you're about. No, but you know the prayers. So we why know the prayers. That's what we're telling you what it is. But <laughs> you're telling us. Do you say the words? Us, we know the prayers. Do you say That's these right. words? But you, hold on. We both can't talk at the same time. We know the prayers, but you're telling us there's an element in the prayer where we're praying to Mo Muhammad. Right, right, and we're saying I, no. I said you, you speak. speak. No, You're not speaking. I said, <laughs> I said you say peace be upon you, O Prophet. Do you say that or not? Oh yes, Allah, no. send His blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Send your blessing to him. I'm talking oh, about Allah. The... We're asking Allah to do it. Okay, I'll, I'll send the website because you're not listening. There is no need to do that. I am an Arabic speaker. Arabic is my mother tongue. And I can tell you from now, we say, At-tahiyyatu lillah wa salawat wa tayyibat. As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala abedillahi salihin. Ash-shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ash-shadu Muhammad abduh wa rasooluh. And then we say, Yeah, exactly. When you say, Allah. What's wrong with that? What is the words before Nabi? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabi. Yeah, translate that. Assalamu alaikum means peace and blessings be upon you, O yeah, Prophet. You, who's you? Yeah, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessings, mercy and blessings upon the prophets. Oh, okay. let, me, let me give an example of something. There's nothing wrong with that. I think I understand his misunderstanding. You think, tell me if I'm wrong. You think when yeah, go the ahead. Muslim says, As-salamu alaykum ayyu and nabiyu, that they're somehow, in that portion of the prayer, they're stopped... Before that, we're praying to Allah. After that, we're praying to Allah. But in that one sentence, we stop praying to Allah, and then we start speaking to Muhammad. And so, and Muhammad is a being who is all knowing and all seeing that he can hear us, and then grant himself peace. Yeah, so, I, so I, didn't, I didn't say. Is that uh, what you think? Is that accurate? Did I accurately explain yeah. what you think? Inevitably, that's no, what can you think. What, what were you saying? Well, I, was, I was saying, so at the end of the prayer, when we end the prayer completely, right, before we, we say our personal prayer, so we turn we turn our head to the right, we say, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. And the reason we do this is because not only are we sending blessings upon the, the Muslims that are to our right and the left, but we also believe as Muslims that we're all born with two angels that are always with us, one on the right and one on the left. So we're acknowledging that they're there. So we're sending blessings upon the Muslims to our right, the Muslims to the left, the angel to our right, the angel to our left. So we're yeah. saying it may it may seem as, the, as though we're addressing them, but we're actually praying to Allah, and it's a prayer to Allah sending yes, blessings because, upon them. Okay? Because it's only Allah, Almighty God, that, can, that has the ability to grant people peace. God has the ability. I can't grant anyone peace. No. You can't grant anyone peace. Yeah. Only God I can understand that, but... So when I say, hold on, hold on, let me get it out. So when I, if I mention Abraham and I say, alayhi salam, Abraham, peace be upon him. I'm not asking 
Abraham to give himself peace. I'm asking Allah, the one who has the capability to give peace, to give it to Abraham. The same thing in the prayer. When that's, if we say, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon the prophet, I'm not asking the prophet to give himself That's not what you say. What's that? You say, peace be upon you. Yes. Who's the you? I'm, but I'm not, the, who has the ability to give the peace? No, Listen, the this question is, is, who is the you? It's, you're, you're arguing about, you're doing something that Paul told you not to do. Arguing about the meaning of words. The, but this is in the Quran, though, I'm just asking you a question, bro. I understand. Let me clarify. Let me clarify. It's in the Quran, chapter 33, verse 56. Allah and his angels give blessing to the Prophet. Oh, you who believe, call for blessings on him and greet him with a prayer of peace. This is in the Quran. And the same blessings and the uh, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us and he would do it. So this is what Allah has taught us. This is the way we are to recite it. This is how our Prophet told us to recite it. Keep in mind, brother, who knows knows the the hadith where it says that when anyone sends uh, sends, uh, peace upon the Prophet, that Allah sends the angels to his grave to inform him of the peace being given to him. I have, it. Let me, let me, I have it. I believe so. I have it. Uh, and and the, 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 big, the big thing that needs to be considered here is, is what I mentioned initially. And, and so we say in English, so that you can understand. So we say all prayers, the words, action, and sanctity are for Allah only. The very next phrase that you're mentioning is peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah. Yeah, so, okay, so, so this would be this would be totally contradictory if we're going from praying to Allah. Now we're praying to the Prophet. That's not what. That's no, not what we're. Not what prayer is, the, the, the question is, is a prayer to Allah. So when we wish, when we, if he, we wish, when we wish peace be upon Muhammad, the intention is not to pray to Muhammad as if it is as if he's an omnipresent being who can hear us yeah. and do and grant us wishes. Wow. That's not the purpose. That's not the yeah, purpose. So when, if I said, if I said this, okay, peace be upon you, O Kenny Boomer, or Bomber, is it Bomber? Bomber. Whatever it is, go and just say, carry on. Yeah, so, Bomber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I said, okay. peace be upon you, O Bomber, okay. and I said, peace be upon you, O Allah, like, the change so is different person, right? Allah. Okay. Well, the, okay. yeah. what this question. Let, let me let me answer just real quick. So I understand mm-hmm. your question. Now now keep in mind that we greet one another by saying assalamu alaikum and we like we salam, right? So when we're saying assalamu alaikum to one another, we're actually this is a prayer. This this phrase right. is a prayer. Okay? So although we're we're greeting one another with that that prayer, inevitably that prayer is to Allah t- saying it, you're saying to to the brother saying May Allah bless you. So, so peace be upon you. It's the same thing. Yeah, so yeah. When we greet one another. It, well, understand. So, it, because because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our Muslim brother, right? Then we're doing. It's the same thing. We're saying assalamu alaikum, brother, in 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 the same way that we would greet one another. So, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah. So I could say assalamu alaikum, brother Ziyad. Bro, assalamu alaikum, brother uh, brother Abu Yazid, Mustafa, brother Bati. It's the same thing. It's so, exactly. So you are it's, talking it's, to him. No, well, it's exactly the same context. No, we're talking to Allah. Remember the two angels that I mentioned. So these angels that 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 uh, that are that I mentioned, when they hear us say and send prayers uh, uh, and blessings upon our brothers, even though we're talking to the brother and greeting the brother with the prayer, so we're praying. We're, it's it's us praying, praying to Allah on behalf of our brother. Okay, so we're saying assalamu alaikum, brother Ziyad. That doesn't mean that I'm praying to Brother Ziyad and praying to Allah. And the angels who heard, heard me send these blessings, they also say, and may Allah bless you as well. Right? Yes. And so, 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 so let me see the hadith. Okay. <laughs> I have this, I have this <laughs> hadith, Brother Yazid, the one that yeah, you were saying, if I, just, if I may yeah. quickly, where Rasulullah said, um, and um, this is the different hadith from the one that you said about the angels taking, the, but this is it's from the Musnad, Ahmed Musnad, and it reads, um, that is mentioned in a Sahih Hadith uh, from Aus bin Abi Aus, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said, 
one of the best day of the day is of your day is Friday. On it, Adam was created. On it, he died. On it, the trumpet will be sounded, and on it, all creation will be swooned. So send a great deal of blessing, blessings upon me on this day, for your blessing will be shown to me. They said, O Messenger of Allah, how will our blessing be shown to you when your body has disintegr disintegrated? He said, Allah has forbidden the earth to consume the bodies of the prophets. Narrated by Ahmed, Imam Ahmed in Al -Murs, uh, uh, Musnad. So here we see from the hadith, Rasulullah has instructed us to give him salam, as in the blessings, right? Allah, and, and as I cited from the Quran, Allah told us in chapter 33, verse 56, Allah and his angels give blessings to the Prophet. O oh, you who believe, us Muslims, not you obviously, O oh, you who believe, call for blessings on him and greet him with a prayer of peace. This is an instruction by Allah. And I go back to my previous thing, what I said. When Allah gives us an instruction, we go for it. We're here and we obey. So that's it. So you telling us, oh, you speak to the Prophet, oh, you do this, oh, you do. it means nothing to us. Literally, bro, it goes through one ear, comes out the ear because you've grammatically messed it up by saying, you're not speaking, you're not speaking. No, we're not conversing here. We're asking Allah. Allah is telling us. So we're asking Allah to you grant You say, oh, prophet. prophet. You don't say, oh, Allah. Say that again. You say, oh, okay. prophet. Our prophet yes, what? we're not going to say, prophet. Who else are we going to be bless giving blessing to you? Okay. Am I going to be blessing you? No, I'm not. I'm not going to be blessing anyone else. Allah directly said, specifically said, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He should be, we should ask him, Allah, to grant, to give him blessings. That's it. So we are giving our salutations. That's it. So end of the day, we get reward yeah, from it. I don't care what you, you know, say. The easiest way to, to end this dispute, right. the easiest way is you you if we bring an Arab speaker to who is non-Muslim to confirm that to you, he will tell you this is the language. Yeah. And I I used to be a Catholic, and I am a native Arabic speaker. Both my both my parents yeah. have roots from Egypt and from Lebanon. They have roots. And Arabic is one of my mother tongues. Actually, I speak three Arabic languages, three, and I'm learning a fourth. And in the Arabic language, when we say assalamu alaikum, we mean peace be upon you, meaning from Allah. But you don't have to, you can, you can, you can, you can continue and say assalamu alaikum wa, rahmat, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But when we say assalamu alaikum by itself, this is what we mean. From Allah, peace and blessings be upon you. From Allah, you don't have to say it. So, notice, notice, so this salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Allah, you are peace and you, uh, peace comes from you. <laughs> it is from So, this is a, so, sir, this is a linguistic issue. This is not a theological issue. Exactly. This is just how things are said in the Arabic language. It doesn't mean that Muslims in the middle of praying to Allah begin to pray to Muhammad and that Muhammad is an omnipresent being who hears everything and sees all things and he and we're telling him peace be and upon you and he by the is way, putting peace on himself. Yeah, that's not it's not a theological Yeah, issue. but remember I didn't one, I didn't one, tell you that. One piece of advice. Yeah, yeah, please. brother, brother, one I've, minute. I've heard I've heard this from CP. Please don't listen to CP and those haters, please. Please, yeah, it will do you harm, brother. Go ahead. Go brother, ahead. brother of a guess, what's your name? Uh, Pak Kofi uh, and Pong. Um, we may not be able to uh, just could you explain us exactly what is your problem? What is where, where you feel finding difficulty to understand? Uh, after I finish a few words, uh, just to explain you in Islamic culture, it is very common. For example, my nine-year-old uh, son, when he wakes up in the morning, if he wakes up first and I didn't see him waking up, he will say, Assalamu alaikum, dad. I will say, oh, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It doesn't mean that he start worshipping me. What happens when we initiate this salam? We are just... We are not raising our hands, but we are praying for each other and sending blessing for each other. This is the way we initiate contact with each other first by sending our blessing towards each other. Who will send the blessing at the last? From Allah. 
That's only the thing. Every time, every single time a Muslim see each other, whoever can take proceedings, they will say first, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Kenny. And then Brother yeah. Kenny is obliged to pray back for uh, me, but praying back for me from only one creator. He's not start worshipping me directly. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah so, so please, if moment. any any other confusions, any other confusion, please uh, raise your confusion properly. And I'm pr pretty okay. confident all of our and John? brother, yeah, coffee, will available to clarify for you. Ask coffee a question is, is English your primary language or do you speak other languages? Yeah, English. So do you speak any other language? Yeah, I speak, like I just said, I know parts of Arabic and Greek. That's Hebrew. not a language that we speak. Well, he wants to know, do you speak another language? Like, I can speak, I said, no, I speak English. I can speak English. You speak Greek? You said Greek. Yeah, so, I already said I speak English. I know parts of other languages, just like everybody else. Okay. So, so, but you're, 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 you seem like an intelligent man, so you understand that languages are different. The way you say something in one language may not be the same as you would say it in a different language. The way something is said and the way it sounds in one language may not make sense to a person of a different language. I mean, you would understand mm. that concept, right? Of course. Yes. So in our English language, to hear someone say, assalamu alaikum to another person, maybe if, you, if you're not, if you don't, you don't know what that means, you're not used to hearing that from as an English person, speaking person maybe you think you know that sounds kind of odd it sounds like they're praying to that person it was such but that's an issue of language that's not a theological issue because we just explained the theology to you we just explained the theology to you the theology is that assalamu alaikum is actually a prayer directed to the creator when you wish peace upon a person you're praying for the creator to give them peace Regardless of how it may sound funny in that language that you don't speak, that's not your native language. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you wouldn't say it that way in your native language, but that's what it means theologically. So, Pete, Pete no, uh, Coffee, do, even... do you think that we're lying to you? Do, you? do you think that we're being insincere about our our explanation to you and our answer to you? No, no, no. Ken, you've been very nice, okay. and I really like uh, – the guy's shirt, whatever. Uh, I his name. Yeah, I do too. By the way, brother Abu Yazid, I love that shirt. I, I've got one similar to it hanging up over there. But uh, <laughs> we all have nice. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we're being sincere about the answer to you. We have no reason to deceive you on the matter. We, we believe uh, in Tawheed. So the, the 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 foundational belief of Islam is Tawheed, which is Islamic monotheism. You all acts of worship have to be directed to Allah. You can't direct an act of worship to a created being. So if something yeah. sounds funny to you in the in Arabic language or when it's when someone attempts to translate it from the Arabic language to the English language and it sounds funny to you, don't automatically assume the worst possible thing. You know, so, and, and just, yeah, brothers, um, let me ask you, brothers, let me ask you, have any of you ever prayed to the Prophet Muhammad? So little, so little, no, 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 never. No, no, no. Never. 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 Okay. That would be shit. No. You would not be Muslim anymore. No, you Islam. So I better yeah, so, than I uh, join Christianity. <laughs> yeah, so he was so hope, just asking. So. Um, yeah, he wanted me to clarify what the issue is, right? Go on, coffee, I got one more coffee. Where right before you speak, I got one more example. You understand the Lord's prayer, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So where you pray. Many Christians pray in the name of Jesus, right? Yeah. So I know I, I had a professor because I went to a seminary. I had a professor and his stance was you, you shouldn't direct your pr prayers to Jesus, to the second person of the Trinity. You should only direct your prayers to the Father, but you should do it in the name yeah. of the Son. Now, if I was a non-Christian and I heard that and I heard someone say, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. I may mistakenly think he's calling on, is he calling on Jesus? Is he calling on, who is he calling on at the moment? Why is he saying in the name of Jesus? It wouldn't make sense to me, but inside Christianity, it makes sense. It adds up. 
you're doing if you do if you pray in the name of Jesus, you're using the status of Jesus as a, a means to pray to the Father. So I'm using that as an example of for somebody outside of a particular ideology or a particular system, aspects of it, when they hear it, it may not make sense to them or they may not understand it. They may misunderstand it. But there is no misunderstanding. There's only one deity in Islam, and all acts of worship are directed to that deity. And when we say priest be upon the prophet or Abraham or Adam or anyone else, we're not, it's not a partition to that person. Assalamu alaikum is a prayer to the creator so that peace will be put upon the person we're directing our words to. Yeah, so so when I when I bring this up, what do you think I'm actually saying? Because I don't know if you because you asked me to clarify, so I'm not sure if you actually understand what I'm saying. Okay, so well, clarify. it sounds like what you're doing. It sounds like what you're trying to do, uh, in my opinion, is uh, something that we see all the time. As a matter of fact, is you're trying to suggest that Muslims are praying to. First, you mentioned the Kaaba, so let's not forget that. So, and then you bring, you bring up the Prophet Muhammad in the prayer as though peace be upon him, as though we're actually praying to him. And so, what what's a common tactic of Christians uh, is that because they have a a polytheistic mind state, even though they try to suppress it, it's still a polytheistic mind state and that you're addressing multiple beings. As we mentioned, uh, Brother Abi Yazid and, and myself have been in, in many churches where we'll start the prayer, you know, they start the prayer in the name of Jesus, Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your precious son, Jesus. And then somewhere along in the prayer, uh, suddenly now we're praying directly to Jesus and maybe, and then somewhere towards the end of the prayer, wherever, now we're praying to the Holy Spirit and then so forth. So, it's, it seems that your intention was to suggest uh, that we also do the same thing, but in fact, we do not. Not even let close. Clarify, Brother Kenny. Let, 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 yeah. Let's hear his clarification why he yeah. said that. And I think I know why, but I want to hear it from him. Yeah. What did you yeah. think that means? Yeah, so like when I was giving the example of like, peace be upon you, Kenny, versus mm -hmm. uh, peace be upon you, O Prophet, Mm -hmm. Who am I addressing in each of those statements? Who am I talking to? The individuals that you are speaking to. Yeah. Yeah. So Address it's different, right? So you're you're addressing to the individuals that you are uh, giving your salam to. Yes. So you're acknowledging yeah, so, the individual. So, you're yeah. Acknowledging, yeah. You're, so, right, you're acknowledging the individual, but it's yeah, a yeah. prayer over that individual to Allah. Yeah. To so Allah. Allah gives us that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I understand the argument because I don't know. If, I used to be a partner with um, David Wood and Sam Shimon. So I used this argument in the, in, the, in, the, in the past. So I understand exactly what the argument is and what the intention of the argument is. I, I used it 10 years ago. So, so, uh, so, so you, when, you, when you say that we're addressing the prophet, expand on that. What do you think that means? What, what is the are you talking to him? Yeah, I'm talking to you. What is the implication of that in your mind? No, before no, so we get he, he, there, but are you talking to him? He said, he, no, said, he are, asked, are, are you talking to are we Allah? Talking to the we are talking to Allah. So here's the thing. Let me explain to you clearly. When, 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 we, when, we, when we read the Quran, when we read Salah, anything that we do and we read, we always we are direct it to Allah. Everything is through Allah. So we're going uh, we're gonna to recite through Allah, uh, to Allah. That's what we are doing. So Allah is listening to us and Allah is also instructing us to give um, blessings or salutations to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we are asking Allah to send his blessing or salutation to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's it. I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you another reason. This is in the Quran. No person to whom God has given the scripture and wisdom and prophethood would ever say to the people, be my worshippers rather than gods, rather be people of Lord, the Lord according to the scripture you teach and teach and you learn. Meaning that no prophet will say, worship me. This is an ayah. You said you know Arabic. So I'm, I'm expecting you to know this. Listen to me. If you don't know what it means, it means say to the people that I ha uh, Allah has revealed. I'm a man just like you. And Allah has revealed to me that your Lord is one Lord. 
This is just a, like a straight explanation of the text. So here we know from the Quran yeah. that the Prophet will not say for him to be worshipped, nor does uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi is, is, is instructed by Allah, kul, to say that I am a man like you and your Lord is being revealed to me, your Lord is only one Lord. So we don't worship a man, yeah. nor do we call him a man. So how can you even uh, suggest yeah. that when we say, Assalamu alaikum, uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, uh, uh, you know, so that we are actually addressing to the Prophet, like directly speaking to him, meaning that we're saying to him, yeah. or no, 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 we're not. We're asking Allah. So, coffee, we're it's coffee. We're again, we're addressing the the one that we're sending the blessing upon. So, if you're saying Assalamu alaikum, brother Kenny, then you're saying you're acknowledging the person that the that the the, 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 the yeah, blessing is That means is I'm being, talking to Kenny. No, well, it, you're you're acknowledging yeah, my yeah, existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you're acknowledging my correct. existence. He's correct. You're correct. We're talking yeah. to him, but who are we talking to him through? That's right. So, so yeah, okay. again, you're, acknowledge, you're acknowledging my existence, Thank you. and that you're yeah. sending a, a so prayer again, over me. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a human. He can't see this guy gets it because of the shirt. You're not going to get the shame. He doesn't have omnipresent hearing. So when we say peace be upon you, O Prophet. We're not speaking to him directly as if he can hear me speak at that moment. No. Did the brother read you the hadith where it is when we wish peace is Allah who can grant the peace and it's Allah who can send his angels to inform Muhammad in the other world, the afterlife that someone has asked peace be upon him. Yeah. So everything is by the power of Allah. It's not that yeah. Muhammad has some power and ability to hear. Now, again, that's just the way it's said in the Arabic language in this particular religion. It may not, you may not, you may think it shouldn't be worded that way. It may sound weird. No, you can word it however you want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep in mind, once again, I, the very, the very I, first thing mentioned is all prayers through words, action, and intentions yeah. are for Allah only. Case closed. Yeah. Case closed. And yes. the salam, yes, the, the, salam the, the, the greeting of peace reaches Muhammad because of Allah. Not because Allah Muhammad. told us yeah. the Quran. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Quran I, have, um, I have a question for our guest. Did you say that you speak Greek? I said I know parts of Greek. Oh, all parts Hebrew. of Greek. And in Arabic. Why? Well, well, Greek is one of my mother tongues. I have, uh, I have many mother tongues. As a matter of fact, oh, that's very good. But um, um, yeah, like I said, okay. I've, I've used. Just, one. just wondering. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've used. Uh, I have more data, like in like uh, a week or two, like twenty second of June, right? So I don't mind coming back later, but I have to really, really stop oh. here. Sure, um, sure. I do we want to talk more about this like, do okay. stop using this uh, argument regarding you are praying, speaking to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam direct and he's listening to you and all of that and because it says you, the English means you, this is the Arabic language, this is a grammatical uh, um, a grammatical uh, issue that you need to deal with it's not anything theological so if you say you're learning Arabic I'm really concerned who are you learning Arabic from because if you're learning it from Google then I, I'm, I'm you know that is concerning but if you're learning it from a share yeah, I, I imagine you're never doing your Arabic happened. class now and you went to an exam <clears> and, and the examiner said to you explain this and you said well it actually means you're speaking to the person and they said seriously that's what it means this is look you think well, you, the you, first uh, your friend already admitted that it means you're speaking to them yeah, well, now my friend said but, you're speaking to them, but who is the blessing going through? Allah. It's, it's, so it's you're directing it's acknowledging you're not, you're not speaking it's, to them, you're directing it to them. This is not the way we well, look. When someone sends me a text message, do I actually are they speaking to me? Okay, dude, said, I, I, I really have to close it. I'm sorry, I don't have the no, data, no but worries, in, in brother, more time, like coming so weeks, good. I have more time. You know what I'm saying? Are you a Christian? Yep. Are you a Christian, yeah, by the way? Well, listen, are you a Christian, by the way? Yeah, I don't I don't have the Wi Fi, so no, in coming weeks, fine. I'll be able to talk. You are a Christian, right? You are a Christian. Yeah, I already said yeah, yes. Okay, fine. So we'll, we'll have a nice discussion between your text as well. Because since you're bringing up something and we refuted you, alhamdulillah, we'll ask you a question and see we if you can turn around some grammatical issues as well in your Greek. You know Greek. i got a Greek brother here. He's more learned in Greek. Yeah. And we can do some grammatical Greek text and see if you can um, bend, you know, be around the bush on that. Yeah, next time. And yeah, the, and the brother, coffee, coffee, before you, you leave...
Coffee, thank you. Yeah, for sorry being about that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Thank you for no, being respectful. Brother Coffee, you're, you're welcome to come back anytime. Yeah, brother Coffee. Before you leave, sorry about that. Just quick words. When you return with further knowledge, I would uh, humbly request that it would please do return. You are most welcome. But uh, bring bring forward a little bit honesty. I am hundred percent sure you are honest guy. I can hear it. You are very respectful guy. So uh, bring honesty in your heart and soul, and inshallah. we will discuss whatever we it takes and we will uh, discuss everything and we will clear all misconceptions if we have we have mean if we have or yourself and a discussion should be in honesty and not just because uh, i want to go and find out uh, some information from david wood and i will throw on you and you will look silly not for that reason please is that okay yeah ab absolutely like I'm going to fight. So my brother uh, in humanity inshallah we will see you again and my brothers will love to have you inshallah. Okay. All right, thank you coffee. Yes. But well, it, it looks like we have it, 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 honesty you got to have you're going to have an honest conversation you have to have honesty in a conversation and just keep it real 100% real. Know that that's a, a Christian apologist argument. Yeah. So we have we have Terry backstage. Uh, Muhammad, peace be upon so when Terry turns his camera on, we'll bring him on to the panel. Okay, so let's bring Terry to the the panel, and we'll. Hey, Terry, we're, welcome to the panel. How are you? Let me make sure you're off mute there. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you, Kenny, for your hospitality, and I heard what you said earlier on. I was uh, kind of impressed by it, uh, the way you said that you have to uh, continue and persevere with your dawa. uh yeah. although I, i come from a different uh uh perspective i i respect the fact that you say you are too supposed to um because that's I, i believe that's a really a christian uh um understanding uh, that we're supposed to love our enemies and uh, and uh, share the gospel with them even if uh, we're being uh, oppressed and persecuted uh, it says to pray for your enemies so it's very interesting that you brought that different angle that i never heard before So in, in light of that, yeah, okay. go ahead. No, I was just saying that's that's Islam. So it's uh, we have we uh, have a right to defend ourselves, but it's it's uh, Allah says clearly in the Quran to invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kind words, and argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious. Sometimes people get caught up in the emotion and they fail to do that. But the objective is to to be decent to one another, and defend yourself if need be. But uh, okay. you know, um, I but, heard that uh, you yes. had some. I heard you had some flack for doing that, so uh, it seems there's a there's a conflict within. But uh, I'm gonna let you guys negotiate. Well, that's, that, that was from uh, someone who has a very limited knowledge about what they're. No problem. About. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you guys debate. I'm gonna let yeah. you guys debate that. I just wanted to ask the question from the guy uh, uh, above me. Uh, what's your name uh, with the glasses and? Uh... <laughs> Abu Yazid. Call me Abu Yazid. Abu Yazid. Abu Yazid. Um, You said you were a former Christian, and then you uh, debated or you uh, negotiated with your pastors. I wanted to know what exactly um, were you arguing from Scripture to become a Muslim, or did you disregard what Scripture said and you just uh, accepted what the Quran said? Because I'm trying to figure out what was your angle when you went to your pastors and told them that you wanted to be a Muslim. Well, we got into a discussion about the um, the being of God. The being of God, yes. Okay, and I wanted to know: Are you were you arguing from the Quran or from the Bible? I was arguing from um, first of all um, logic and common sense, and then we got into the in, into the Bible, and then we got into some of the Quran. So uh, how the about we, okay, how about we address the logic part? Because um, when we talk sure. about logic, reason. We're talking about mathematics. We're talking about numbers. We're talking about space. Um, God is, according to your understanding, your God is infinite. I mean, eternal, right? So that's before time and space. So what reasoning, reasoning, or what uh, mathematics can you use when mathematics uh, depends on time and space? Repeat that one more time. Basically, you, you believe your God is eternal, so He inhabits etern uh, eternity. So well, we, don't, we, wouldn't say, we wouldn't say God inhabits anything. Okay, so he does, so he's in. The, where is he exactly? 
that where is not where is not a, a description that can be used for God. Okay, but he's eternal. Okay, let's let's. Uh, that's interesting that you say that. But he's eternal, so there's no mathematics that could apply to him, because mathematics depends on time and space. There's nothing. There's nothing in the created universe that it would apply to God. So why? What did you say? You use logic. What logic can you use uh, uh, to, to ascertain who God is when God is eternal? You can't and use uh, logic to ascertain who God is, but you can use okay. logic to ascertain whether. A particular doctrine or an argument has a contradiction in it or not okay so basically what you're saying is you're ascertaining from what has been revealed to you no I, I mean what I just said you can use logic to examine a claim and to determine whether the claim has eternal contradictions in it or not uh, uh, let, let me give an example if God said okay if some God said he is three can you prove to me how that could be logically uh, false if the person, uh, if the three persons are eternal? How can okay. you use reasoning? Okay. If you say that this God is absolutely one and unique without parts and, and is unchanging, and then you tell me that same God is three, uh, let's say persons, since that's the doctrine of the Trinity, three persons. And then that doctrine, this doctrine that uh, three persons never existed previously, it came about in a time and space. Well, that that represents there are a lot of contradictions in all of those claims and statements. Okay, so now you're using uh, I, I know the three persons is biblical terminology, but you the, all, well, all the I, other stuff. Uh, the three no? persons is not big, biblical terminology. Uh, how, how do you figure? Uh, wh wh sure. What do you mean by that? Well, what Bible verse would would um, tell us about the three persons? I, I can give you one verse that uh, distinguishes Maybe. between two persons that are eternal. I can no, say not, that. No, 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 not distinguish. Not that distinguish. No, you said that three persons are biblical. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would like to see that verse. So, so, do you have a Bible verse that declares that God is three persons? Uh, uh, what is your understanding of the word persons? Uh, I just want to make the clear. You just said three persons, don't I, I know. I didn't use the word three persons. You I, I know. No, no. I know the definition. I know the definition. What's, of, what's, what's the verse? The definition of person actually doesn't matter. What matters? Oh, it doesn't is, matter? Okay, no problem. Because no, 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 it, 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 it doesn't matter right now at this point. Because you said okay. that three persons are biblical. Yeah, you said yes. You said okay, that. No I didn't say that. You said what's okay. the verse, and I hope it's not from here. So I hope it's you, not from here. So what is your what is your evidence that the three persons are biblical? Okay, so uh, uh, one thing before I give my verse, or you, did you say I hope you hope it's not from the Bible? Where do you think I was going to go and appeal to? We'll go. We'll go to it, Terry. That way we can. Okay. Go to it. You know, just straight okay. to the point, okay. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you said don't go to the Bible. I didn't. Just say how do you say go to the Bible? Okay. I said it, I hope it's not from here, meaning this ver these versions of the Bible, the one I'm know, holding in my it's, hand. It's, it's from the Hebrew also. Uh, it's Deuteronomy from Hebrew. four. Yeah, in the Hebrew. Yeah. It, it, it that's that. Deuteronomy four verses twelve, verses thirty three, and verses thirty nine. It says Yahweh spoke from the midst of the fire. It says Yahweh spoke from the uh, from heaven, and it says those uh, voice of Yahweh spoke from the midst of the fire, and we know the voice of Yahweh is the Holy Spirit. Once you compare Genesis one two to uh, Psalms twenty nine verse three four, and the, all all the rest okay, of the verse. So, so, so you so again, you're saying there's no that's not an explicit statement about God having three persons. There's so three you're persons deriving you're you're using, you're using interpretation to derive from those particular passages that there must My be three persons. Is. My reasoning. My reasoning. But do you that, have that, an explicit thing that you said. Uh, hold on, hold on, let me, let me get it out. Do you have an explicit statement about God being three persons? Well, what do you need for, for me to, to establish that? I, 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 you said you use logic. Yeah. I'm using logic. Do you know, do you, three persons, do you know, do you know what explicit three persons, wait, do you know wait, what explicit I don't need. Do you, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. One, one step at a time. Go ahead. Do you understand what I'm what I asked you, uh, for an explicit statement? Do you do you understand what I'm asking for? Why should it be explicit? And then why is that not explicit? No, what, why shouldn't it be explicit? It's not explicit. <laughs> it's very vague. Well, you what just gave, first of all, you said it at a speed of sixty miles an hour or hundred kilometers an hour. So and let, me it wasn't, uh, let me repeat then. Uh, I, I'm gonna do it slowly. 
if I say three persons are speaking, if there's three voices, there's three persons. I said, Yahweh is the eternal name. Psalms 83 verse uh, 19 or 18 says, that's his eternal name. And that's, and that's only him who has it. So Yahweh spoke from the midst of the fire. That's one person speaking. Yahweh spoke from heaven. That's two persons speaking. The voice of Yahweh spoke from the midst of the fire. That's three well, per persons speaking. At the, at the same time? At the same time? Does it say I, at the same time? I could explain it, but uh, that, that's, I have to elaborate. So your, your definition of a person is a voice. Uh, if you have three persons speaking, not only the voice. No, 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 but, but it doesn't, it, it, that's what you say. You say that the voices are three persons. So are no, you I saying that, uh, that, that, that a person constitutes a voice? I just told you the voice in verse 33 is speaking. I know what you told me, but I'm asking you a question. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Well, you what, what is it funny? You say, hold on. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. What I understand tell, tell what you, what you do. You say everyone else concedes, but now look what's happening now. You've, you, you yourself said that about the three persons, biblical, it's there, and I can show it to you. And when Brother Abu Yazid is asking, you, you're showing him verses, Deuteronomy um, 4, Deuteronomy this, go back to Genesis. You're showing nothing explicit. And then now look at your face. You keep on saying that everybody else, look at the face. Zakir, look at his face. Look at Hamza's look at face. Look at Mustafa's face. Look at Fazi's face. And now look at your face. Wallahi, you know, it's come back on you today. This is a Ke Kenny, uh, brother, Kenny. Remember brother, that doesn't dawah? mean that if... Oh, what, so what's brother, remember the dawah? You remember the dawah thing that you was... Me, I didn't come for emotions. No, I think... Kenny, uh, okay. uh, what you said, I came on your show. I came in on your show because I felt... I felt... I felt when you told, when it was you told me, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you told me that the three persons are biblical, I was expecting you to tell me an explicit statement about God being three persons. You're telling me about voices. So I'm uh, assuming... Excuse me. So I'm assuming I'm assuming you believe a voice equals a person. Uh, how about this? Uh, I, I, the last person that came Can on you the answer show. Answer the question. I, I will yes answer no. the question, but yes, I, I, no. I, but I'm yes, no. I'm going to put your stand. I'm going to put your standards to the test because the last person that came, you you had. I don't to have a standard. Him, right? A question is not a standard. Why why are you, why are you agitated? The, the last guy that came, you, you because you have you're, to explain you're, to him. I'm agitated. You have to explain to him, right? I'm I'm I'm, he, I'm agitated because I keep asking the same question over again, but, and you don't answer it. But you asked me twice. It, it, it was many times. Three times at this point. Yeah, I, I'm just is trying to. Per, is, a, is a voice a person? Is a person a voice? A person that speaks. Uh, uh, if you speak, you're a person. Let's put it that way. That's simple, no? No, but that's not what I ask you. Does uh, a uh, voice uh, equal a person? According to the Hebrew scripture, the voice of Yahweh is a person. Yes. He's so walking I, in Genesis. Every time, so every time I'll so every time that Yahweh speaks, that equals a person. Is, is that what I said? I said the voice of Yahweh. I'm asking you. That's I'm not telling you what you said. I'm asking you. I'm asking. But that but it had nothing to do with what I said. Well, you asked me a question that has nothing to do with what I said. I said the but voice you said of Yahweh. There were, there were multiple different voices. And in, in your, in, I'm trying to understand your argument. You said there were wow. multiple voices, and it, so me, are you saying that the multiple voices constitute multiple persons? I let me repeat one more time. The three persons speaking. So that's why I'm saying there's three persons there. But how did you arrive at the idea that these are three? The, the three voice voices are persons. Did I say three voices? That's just three persons speaking. Uh, do, how, okay, how, many, to, how many verses did you quote? Three verses where three persons okay, are three speaking. Verses. Three, that's three verses attesting that there were three speakings of Yahweh. You're saying that these constitute three persons. Three persons. Okay. Three. How did you arrive at the idea that these three voices are three persons? Because it says Yahweh spoke a name okay. and Yahweh spoke. Action, name, action. So there are three Yahwehs. Uh, so you're saying there are three Yahwehs? Without a doubt. Okay. Is there one Yahweh? There's three persons called Yahweh. No, that's not what I asked you. Is there one Yahweh? What, what do you mean that there's one Yahweh? In this verse, it's the, the, the name Yahweh is used that's twice. That's a trick question. Is there one Yahweh? What do you mean by one Yahweh? Meaning, meaning one. Oh, my God. No, if, if you, <laughs> wait, oh wait, wait. If you, if, well, one second, one second. If you're saying that oh, using sure. the one, if you're using one as a unit, uh, I'm not false. using one as any. I'm not. No, no, no. Don't get too deep. It's not that deep. It's not that deep at I, all. I promise you. Is there one Yahweh? I, I could say Deuteronomy 6 4, Yahweh is a cod as Adam and Eve is a cod one flesh. 
two persons, one flesh. What? He, I'm talking about Hebrew. I, I quoted the verses. Yeah. Did God, I, I, ever that, does God ever say that he's one in the in the in the uh, Echad, not one like the way you're using it, not the way you're saying it. You're using so what English, does Echad mean? What, what like does Echad mean? I just gave you an example. Adam and Eve no, are not Echad an example, a definition. What does Echad I just gave mean? you the, the phrase gives you the definition unified. Adam and no, Eve no, are no, one no, flesh. No, 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 that's what, what is words, the, yeah. Abu Yazid, let me just quickly clarify him. Adam and Eve being one, of course, this is not what it means. It means being one, meaning they will create both of them together, they will create one child or a child. It's, that's it's, what it means. Trust me, that's what says, the, the Jews say, not you. So you can't you, tell, you can't translate what the Jews are saying to us, which before Christianity came, the Jews were already interpreting this text. So don't be turning verses, around telling me you're you're no I'm sorry, sir. That's not what it means. Your understanding or Adam and Eve are or one both. flesh. It says one flesh Adam and what? Eve. Created one flesh. Created one flesh. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, no, no. You added so, a word. Sir, sir, you added sir, a word to Ikad, it. Ikad. I kept it word, word. Ikad. The word Ikad, you're saying it has one definition and one meaning in the Bible. No, it has multiple meanings, actually. Oh, but you just said multiple meanings. Okay, what are some of the other meanings? Oh, it can be one uh, as, a, uh, as a unit, yeah. But you just made it seem like that's an impossibility. No, I'm trying to give you uh, open the lane towards okay. my understanding. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what when I was doing. When it's applied to God, when it's applied to Yahweh, what does it mean? It, it could mean, uh, uh, depending on the context, I, uh, if you're going to go to six Deuteronomy 6.4, Deuteronomy 4 is right, right before Deuteronomy 6.4, where there's three okay, persons give me, speaking. Give me, one, give me one context and let's look at it. I just gave you Deuteronomy 4, 12, 33, 36, three persons speaking. Uh, uh, talking to Deut Deuteronomy 4 what? 12. 12. Well, you said the word, the word Ikad is in this verse. Uh, uh, the word the word Ikad is used in Deuteronomy 6, 4. But before you go to Deuteronomy 6, 4, you have to go to Deuteronomy 4, where there's three persons speaking. So that is the context I'm using. Where does it say three persons speaking, though? Uh, Fred, you're it. saying you're, you keep, you, you did, you're defining this as three persons. I'm trying to find out. How do you arrive at defining it three persons? Because we know the original author and original audience didn't believe in the Trinity. No, uh, that 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 is your opinion. So that I no, can no, give you the, you're saying the original audience believed in the Trinity. Of course, because I'm just quoting it from, from the from from the from the Book of Moses. When was when was one author of the Trinity formulated? When was the doctrine of the Trinity formulated? Uh, well, you're talking about the doctrine, yeah. You're talking about the do doctrine of the Trinity, but I'm, I'm talking about what scripture says. I don't care about what uh, scholars or what people came no, after. You just said, yeah, you just said the original audience were the Trinitarians. Trinitarians. You just said huh? the original audience exactly. believed in the doctrine of the Trinity. Oh, oh, the, they believe in the, 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 the uh, excuse me, excuse, they believed in the doctrine of the Trinity, but they didn't use the word Trinity. Uh, if, okay, if, if, I could leave, yeah. the, I could leave the word Trinity want, alone, the doctrine itself. You said that they hold that doctrine, correct? Yes, Deuteronomy 4. When was that doctrine formulated? What do you mean that doctrine formulated? It's formulated well, in Deuteronomy the doctrine 4. The Trinity formulated. Deuteronomy 4, that's good enough. No, when was it? When, you, when, when? That's, it's that's, circular, it's that's circular, circular logic, sir. That's circular logic. We both know what? the doctrine of the, the first time that any resemblance of a doctrine of the Trinity was ever spoken about was it in the third century AD? The Trinity. Yeah, brother, brother, brother uh, let, let me say something real quick. So I, I'm at Go ahead. Deuteronomy 6 4. I'm going to do the two uh, Strong's concordance and yes. looking at the definition of the word echad. Go ahead. And it, it's so every one of these definitions uh, one, one, each, every, a certain. Uh, uh, an indefinite article only once, once, once for all, one, uh, one, an, one another, the one, the other, one after another, one after one, first. Uh, so it's, 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 uh, you know, this is based on what Strong's Concordance and language. So do you believe that, sir, sir, do you believe that I, God that, is a compound I, unity? I, I, so do you believe Ikad is a compound unity? It depends on what you mean by compound, but I, I what I, I could say it's. Is it, it a unit, uh, it, I mean, it's a unit. I just uh, I want to ask you a question. Different persons, right? Do you, that's what you believe. 
It's a unity I believe of this. Difference. Exactly. Let's put it that way then. I like the way you okay, said so it. So you believe God is a compound of made up of different parts? I, I, I We don't use that type of language. No, I, we don't believe that. Okay. But you use the language of person though. That's fine, yeah? But in, yeah, in the, because, in the, uh, the word doesn't person, speak about person. The what word is a person compound? is used in scripture True. also. What is a compound? Compound, if uh, I, I use the word because you used it, but uh, compound means uh, more than one, we'll say. Uh, 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 I, I don't use that type of language. I'm, I'm just using uh, the because he uh, used it. explicit okay. text, Deuteronomy 4. It's, Deuteronomy 4 it doesn't talk, talk about a compound unity. It's, it's, it talks you're, about a first. You're, you're infusing the understanding of Trinitarianism into so explain a word it to me. You're infusing. Give me your, give me your, hold on. Give me your understanding. Hold on, hold on. You're infusing a fourth century doctrine. No problem. Give me your understanding. Into a text, into a text from what three thousand years ago. Give me your understanding. Yahweh speaks from the fire, and Yahweh speaks from heaven. And go to Deuteronomy thirty-two, verse forty, which says Yahweh raised his hand to heaven. I, I need to give me your understanding. You, you no. could you could do it. you could go with I those red okay. herrings. You want to you want to know what you're basic. doing now? You don't know what you're doing now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me give you a very basic common sense understanding of that as far as understanding literature. That's hermeneutics, the interpretation of literature. If somebody told me Bill spoke from the heaven and Bill spoke from the fire, I believe Bill, one person, spoke from the heaven and Bill spoke from the fire. I don't believe there are two Bills. What did you just say? <laughs> what you, and and it's just use the name Bill. Bill. You just use the name Bill as an example. Example. Okay, yeah. so, so, a bill or Bill as an okay. example. You put any name you okay. want. So. Yahweh, Bill, John. Yeah. Abu Muhammad, Abu Yadi. Okay. You're telling me Yahweh spoke from the heaven and then Yahweh spoke from the fire. Okay. Yahweh spoke from the heaven. Yahweh spoke from the fire. Why does that constitute two different Yahwehs? Yeah. Okay, I get to, I, I, I get your point. So let's because uh, you use linguistic, let's use it linguistic. Uh, Genesis nineteen twenty four. Yahweh, Yahweh. Okay, uh, common sense. Uh, Genesis nineteen twenty four. Yahweh made a rain from from Yahweh in heaven. So so is, I'm adding to compounding my so, argument, so, which supports my no, position. No, wait, wait, tell me what. Tell me what's your. Tell me what's your your response to that. From and don't forget the from. But that's not an argument. That's not from. an argument. That's not an argument because that's the language. Barry, of the, that, yeah, yeah, that, language. that doesn't tell me they're two different Yahweh's. That doesn't tell me they're two oh, different the, the from doesn't three different or 500 give me, different give me, one, ex give me one example. Where okay, from, I think let me give you an example. Genesis 4. Give me one example. Where from, let me give you an example. Wait, one second. Genesis chapter 4, verse 23. And Lamech said to his wife, Genesis chapter 4, verse 20. This is the language. And Lamech said to his wives. Ada and Zilla, hear my voice, O wives of Lamech. So Lamech is now saying to his wife, hear my voice, O wives of Lamech. This is exactly what the rabbis have used for Genesis um, 19, the one that you said about God raining fire um, on them, saying God the Lord rain fire. He, they said this is the language of Hebrew. That this is, We have more several examples of that. That one, the, the, this is the... Um, the Hebrew, like the Arabic language that we have, one person can be spoken in different, um, like in, um, like first person, second thir person, third person, like that, and it could be the same person you're referring to. Like it's when we first, second, Fatima, we're first Allah is telling us, we're first, first praising Allah, and then you alone we worship. So we are praising Allah first, then we, you alone we worship. You see, like from 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 one part from praising, then Allah is instructing us now. Allah is telling us about Himself. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise due to Allah. Then Allah is saying to us now to directly um pray um to depend on Him. So it's moving the the again. This you can use it as iltifad, a sudden change of person or something you know different Arabic language or Hebrew language. This doesn't prove there's two person, three person, four person. It's the same God. Wait, okay, so let's let's. Uh, I want to uh, hold on. I want to I want to address uh, Christian. He's been waiting patiently. Well, welcome to the panel, Christian. How are you? You may have to. There you go. Okay. Uh, what's the topic? What is the topic? You've been listening. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, uh, actually, uh, uh, I don't want to talk about faith because. Uh, discussing about faith is very complicated. I want to talk about 
uh, logic uh, uh, comparison about Bible and Quran like that or something like that. Okay. I don't want to talk about well, we're, Brother, we're having a conversation here. You can't just show up not yeah, knowing what the conversation is and then decide you want to change the conversation. Uh, because I hear the the discussion make uh, nonsense uh, because uh, Muslim don't believe Bible and Christian don't believe Quran. Well, I don't and need. We don't need to. I don't need to. I don't need to believe a piece of literature to apply hermeneutics to the literature. That, that's not an issue of belief. That's an issue of principles of understanding language, understanding when someone mm. speaks. Uh, so like I, I made the point I made the point okay. to the brother that one of the first principles of hermeneutics is understanding the text from the voice of the original author to the original audience. Yeah. And I said that yeah. the original author and the original audience were not trinitarians. So you don't I don't how have do to believe that? I don't how do I know that? Because yeah. the doctrine of the trinity didn't exist and they were monotheists. Exactly. Okay, let's leave the, let's leave the word trinity uh, alone. Can can you just respond? First of to all, that? One second, first one second. of all, I I want ask so, to so you all here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So in well, order to okay, read Christian Christianism into can, the old can Testament, we can we make can we make it enter? What was that? Now, hold on. So, so let's let's get control here. Okay, so Christian, what is what is what is the point or question that you might have that could add to this ongoing discussion? Because we don't want to change the subject because it's a uh, right in the middle of a discussion. But okay. Be before we before we we want to discuss about God, we have to search what the meaning of God really means. If we if we if we ask Muslim what the meaning of God, Muslim will be explain the other definition of God. And and this different with will with with we will will make discussion make nonsense because we 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 have different different understanding about God. First of all, we have to discuss what the meaning of what of the meaning of God really mean in the Bible and in the Quran. Well, that's kind of what we're discussing here, brother. So they, they, they're addressing the different, uh, different uh, aspects or different opinions. Trini uh, Terry is arguing that, that the God is a Trinity. And of course, we're monotheists. We don't believe that God is a Trinity. No, so. no, no, no. It, it, it's not. It's not about. It's not about Trinity. It's not about Tawhid. Uh, I want to ask you what. What is the meaning of God okay. in okay. the Quran? Can I just answer this, Kenny, brother? Kenny, I will just. I want. I want. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Christian, I, I want. Your answer. I'll give you an answer. Uh, and that's it. Because, so we'll finish it here. Let wait, me just finish it for you. Wait, wait, Please. wait. Oh, let me just finish it for you, brother. What is the definition of God? God is all knowing, all hearing. Was Jesus um, all knowing? Did he know the hour? No, he didn't. So he can't be God. Halas. So God is all knowing, all hearing. So your answer is complete now. You need to first find the answer of why wasn't Jesus all knowing? Now you're going to say that he was a God in flesh. Now you're going to go to another side. No, no, no. No, no, no. That, that, so that, that's what the meaning. We move on. Please, let's move on. That... We had a really good conversation. Brother Abu Yazid was very nice to um, put his thoughts and information into pin down Terry with his erroneous. Um, Free person Genesis and all of that rubbish. By the way, um, um, Faz was messaging me, brother Kenny, and he okay. um, he he was he told me to refer to First Kings chapter eight verse one. Solomon convoked the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes and the ancestral chieftains of the Israelites before King Solomon. Wow! So Solomon is con uh, convoked the elders of Israel, and then he says before King Solomon. Solomon mentioned twice within the text. So again, this is the language of the um, of Hebrew. Chapter one, first Kings chapter one. No, 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 no. Uh, if wait, 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 if wait, we wait, learn, wait, one second. I want to hear what he said. First, first Kings, what? look, first Kings, uh, first Kings chapter eight, verse one. Um, speaking first of the first person and third person of um, uh, Solomon Lamech in Genesis chapter four, verse twenty. We're gonna look, one one verse. One verse is good. One verse. Yeah. One king. I'll, I'll give you the better verse. Genesis four twenty three and first Kings um eight one. They both Which speak one? of the same person twice. Um, so Genesis four twenty three. They are. Genesis four twenty three. Yeah. 20, that, you, you'll be teaching me something new. That's fine. I always teach you something new, and you know Thank that. Thank you. Um, brother Abu Yazid, please carry on, and I'm listening to you. I told Brother Fast to join us. Hopefully, he should join us. 
but he did have a bit of a conflict with Terry, and Terry was being dishonest with him. I have to be honest about yeah, it, and um, he was upset. But anyway, brother Abu Yazid and Kenny, so, uh, so if, if 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 Terry or the 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 uh, elders that I spoke to, or anyone else wants to believe in the Trinity, they have the right to believe in that. But you can't tell me that a doctrine that is based in philosophy, the Trinity is is a philosophical ideology. It's built through philosophy, and we and Terry just showed us that it's built. Okay, can, can I respond? There is no explicit, there is no philosophy. explicit statement from God or His prophets talking about God being a multiple person being. So it has to be it has to be argued with philosophy, and to take bits and pieces of Scripture and combine them and give them a meaning that the original author and audience never gave them. All right, first of all, I, I want to make it clear. I, I went to Genesis 4. I went to, uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, Deuteronomy 4. I went to Deuteronomy 32, verse 40, which says Yahweh raised his hands to the sky. So these are not, and I could continue all day with this. So this is not, uh, I'm picking bits and pieces. You haven't established your position from nowhere. Uh, I haven't given you a position. Was, what position have I given you? Tell me the position uh, I gave. Your position is again my position. So that's the position in, in itself. Your position is saying that I'm using philosophy when I'm quoting scripture. You're using philosophy. Okay, quote me a scripture that says God is three persons. I, I already did it. I gave you Deuteronomy 4. No, you, you did not. No, you did not. Deuteronomy You were all over the place. Show me a verse. I, 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 I went to three verses. I didn't go all over the place. I went to, I went three, to three verses. verses. So which that's one all over. Verses? That's all over which the place. Which one of those three verses? But I could, put, I, I could add more. Hold on. Which one of those three verses explicitly says, I am God, I am three persons, or God is three persons? God is three I, persons. I three persons are God. Okay, you're saying that God has to make it in a way like I don't say God has to make I don't have to I'm not saying God has to do anything. So you could use you your mean, brain. You're you're can I, can I say something you, uh, just briefly? Hold on, let me get this one thing out. Sure. You keep trying to make it seem as if God explicitly says these things in the in the Bible, and when you're asked to show these explicit statements. You're not showing us explicit statements. You're showing us statements that you give a meaning to. And I'm asking you, you to you reply told us about a meaning. voice. You told us about a voice and you told us. No, no, I, I said, I, don't, don't misrepresent You told us about me. different voices and you say, that that were, voice, you say these voices constitute a person. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Don't misrepresent my statements. Uh, if you're doing oh. Dawah, you got to be honest. Uh, I okay. said Deuteronomy 4 speaks of three persons speaking. Don't misrepresent me. So, but you, you uh, have to three, respond. Three, what, three person, you have to respond. You have to respond to three persons speaking. That's what you got to do. You got to show me that, why you haven't shown me speaking. three persons speaking. You haven't. You so you told me Yahweh. You told me. Tell me when I'm wrong. You told me Yahweh spoke from the heavens. Did you not say yes. that? Yes. You told me Yahweh spoke from the earth. Yes. So from the fire. From the fire. From the fire. Four twelve. And on earth. On the earth. That doesn't, then I said, do, that doesn't no, no, say anything no. about three persons. It tells no, me Yahweh no. spoke from the heaven and Yahweh spoke from the fire. Oh, so, so you're saying Yahweh came on earth? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's what you, your text says. No, okay, so, so, okay, so let's go to that point then. So you're, you're, you're accepting that Yahweh comes on earth because he says he I, raised his hand to, to heaven. Why are you playing games? I'm just showing that you're... Why are you playing games? I'm just trying to show you that you're, you're not hold on, Terry, hold on, Terry. Let's put it on pause for a second, okay? So, yeah, it does seem like you're trying to uh, dodge the point that he just made. But let, let me say this. So when we look at these types of discussions, and I think I want to go back to just briefly what I think Christian was trying to suggest. When we, when we talk about these issues, we, we have to put uh, certain expectations on our creator. And that someone might hear that and say, wait a minute, you, you have expectations of your creator? Well, absolutely. We should expect that our creator would be clear and unjust and that he would give us clear definitions about who he is. OK, and we see that in the Quran where it says, cool. Say Allah is the one, the only God, the eternal, the absolute. There's nothing that compares to him and so forth. So that's that's a clear statement and that's a just statement. That's something that we can take to the day of judgment. And know okay. that uh, you know when we're questioned by that about that, do we do we understand what what message that our our Creator gave us to to define who He is in that in that statement? Now we should expect if we if someone believes that the Bible is the Word of God or even the inspired Word of God, then we should have the same expectation in that 
we shouldn't expect that our God, our creator would, would expect us to have to work out uh, puzzles and stuff and so forth in, in order to understand who he is. That That's unjust. That's not fair because there's people of different levels of intellect and different levels of reading comprehension. And you, you know, that it's unfair to humanity as a whole when even, even some of the greatest uh, minds have, have, uh, have juggled this whole idea of the Trinity. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, Eusebius, or one, I don't know, maybe not Eusebius, but one of them said that if you, if you try to uh, explain the Trinity, that you'll, you can lose your mind. One of the, the scholars, I have to find out who it was. I think if there wasn't Eusebius, it was another, uh, um, another, another early uh, um, Christian uh, scholar. So, uh, but again, we should ask, in, not ask, but we should expect from our creator rather that he explains to us who he is because this is important. And if we, as human beings, we, you know, we expect when we're getting explanations or giving explanations about something that the explanations should be understandable and legible and, and clear, then surely our God, our creator, who is, should be the most understandable, the most, uh, you know, the one who gives the clear uh, understanding of who he is and so forth about such an important and pressing issue, such as our salvation, that we should have an expectation that our, our God, our creator would indeed give us a clear understanding of who he is before he judges us for that so I just and, want I, to and, add I that to and i agree with that and just i would like to stipulate that i believe that i have an understanding of what the trinity is it's quite clear and it's quite revealed throughout all scripture and he says it's by his spirit that we are able to ascertain this reality so see, that's, us see terry that's that, see that's, no, 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 that's I'm, saying I, 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 what, well i understand what you're saying but let, let me just say this okay. just briefly so because i'm on your show i'm on your show yeah, right. So this is something that we hear all the time that you have to have you have to have the spirit of God dwelling within you in order to understand it. No, we don't. So no, but the, it's, it's the in the Old is, Testament also. Yeah. Well, the thing is that the, you know what the Quran states about this matter is Alhamdulillah, Allah, I, I, Allah I mentions this this disparity here uh, and this contention between not Muslims and, and Christians, but actually Muslims and Jews on the matter. And that Allah says that the Christians and Jews dispute one another while reciting from the same book. And the point being is that the, the, Jew, the Jews are going to take uh, what you're trying to, to impose, and not just you, but the Christian mind tries to impose on the Old Testament. Uh, the Jews disagree with that. So they're going to take those same verses and say, wait a minute. No, it doesn't mean that at all. They're going to totally refute the idea of a trinity. So for us as Muslims to come along and say, you know what, if we're true monotheists, then we, in this matter, we have to side with the Jews because the Christians are the odd man out in the situation. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's, it's a, it, you know, if you're going to call yourself a true monotheist, then matter of fact, uh, <laughs> even though the Christians, matter of fact, I encourage people to, uh, to read the book by Sir Anthony Buzzard. Of course, he's a Unitarian and I've got a couple of his books over here. They're amongst my, all, all my other books, but nevertheless, so uh, we have Unitarians that, that dispute this matter as well. So Unitarian Christian was, is going to come and hear these same verses that you're mentioning and say, no, it doesn't mean that. This oh, is the how about, Trinitarian view that's being imposed upon the text. But what about the Essenes? Real quick, real quick. What about the Essenes who, who came 100 years before Jesus Christ, who uh, equates Melchizedek, who is Jesus Christ, to Yahweh, as per Isaiah 60, 61, verse 2, and, uh, and 1Q Melchizedek 11, uh, 1Q Melchizedek 13, the scroll, 100 years before Jesus Christ. So these were real Jews also. This, these are not modern Jews. This is Jews way before the, the Jews you're referring They also to. have additions on their text as well in the DSS um, scrolls as well. They have longer editions. They have 15% more longer in the Jeremiah scroll. That's not the great scroll of Isaiah. Hold on. The great scroll of Isaiah reads Ahmed, not Ahmed. Um, Etmech. So we can go on and on and on. Plus, there's a lot of forgery as well with the scrolls as well. Arabic scrolls have been found in the Qumran caves as well. Are you going to dispute that as well? So uh, there's uh, a oh, temple scroll. The temple scroll. Listen, ah, oh, subhanallah. The temple scrolls were found as well. The um, ah, oh, what is the book, uh, brother Abu Yazid? May know. I, I forgot the um, the one, the Ethiopian canon. They have in the Ethiopian canon that they didn't have it in the uh, yes, course, in the, in the Masoretic. Yes. Uh, it's written in the Gias language. They have their own canon of the Bible. Yeah, you know, they have this uh, book. Um, I forgot which book it is, subhanAllah, that they found the Hebrew version of it in the Qumran caves. So now they said, okay, we had the, we didn't have the Ethiopian version of it. We got the Hebrew version now. So that means we should have had that part of the canon. 
So now you're going to put yourself in more trouble to show that your Bible hasn't been preserved. So let's not go no, to that. Yeah, no, no, there's, there's wait, another wait, wait, issue. Wait, 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 a quick there's response. Another response. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's another issue. Cause, 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 if if cause, there was a group of people, people issue, issue. hold on. There's another issue. <laughs> if there was a group of people a hundred years prior who believed that a um, the Yahweh, what did you say they believed in again? They, they believe at least in two persons. Let's put it that way. Go ahead. They Please. believed in two persons. Okay. Okay. Were they monotheist? Yes, they were. So if you believe in two persons that are God, you're a monotheist. No, no, no. You're using your Quranic understanding. I'm trying to establish. I'm not using, I didn't wait, wait, about let me, I let you speak. Let me go ahead and tell me what I, what I mean. Aziz, he's, he's aren't making you, it. They didn't, believe, they didn't believe that. They didn't. That's not their belief. They believed in three messiahs, different messiahs, but they didn't believe about messiah. I, I thought no, no, I, I, no, no, no. I referred. I What's referred to one specific. What's your evidence? I, one, yeah, What's I, your I, evidence? I, you repeated three times. I, I, I refer to one specific scroll, a scroll, one mm -hmm. Q thirteen Melchizedek. Don't talk about Messiah. It doesn't talk about Messiah in one Q. I have uh, listen. 13. I have listen. I have, listen, I have, I have access you, to the scrolls okay, hold on. because you're, I have a book by Giza Vermes. No problem. He has no access problem. To all of them. So let me read, read it, it and I find out. We, we can one, go. We can read it let's, not, let's let's try to be be patient with one another. And okay, can, go can ahead. I just finish my statement? Because he made an argument that's totally irrelevant to my position. I don't care what else they they have in in, in their uh, library. The fact that they spoke of two persons being divine is no, showing hold on, hold on. that this is pre. Well, hold on, hold on. They did not think. Well, did, they they did, hold on. did they believe in two persons? Did they believe in two? Did they believe that I know God the truth? Okay. Hold on. I know the truth. Asking. I know the truth first. Did they believe but that God finish. had two persons? Can I finish now? Can I make a statement without the without you no, interrupting? The, the, the concept of a of the concept of a multi-person God did not exist. My point is, is that it, it, it predates Christianity. No, no, no. So it goes on, against no, your one point. One, it talks about three seconds. It, it took me three seconds. Tell me the name again. One Q. One Q. Wait, 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 wait. It took me three seconds for you to interrupt me. Three seconds. Is this doubt? Okay, okay, let's, 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 let's Terry, Terry, Terry finish, your, finish your brief statement, and then let's go to Brother um, uh, Mustafa. I, I appreciate that, Kenny. I appreciate that, Kenny. I want to know the reference. One Q, what is that? What's what reference? I'm gonna give it to you. Terry, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give it to you in my in my uh, in my no, statement right now. No, no, give it right to now. me now. I'm gonna, I've got the book. Kenny, of, uh, Giza Kenny, Vermes. thank you Terry, for your just, hospitality. Just get, well, you yes, great. Terry, Terry, just tell me what say, the reference is. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it in my statement. So try to calm down. Uh, 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 connect it now. So, um, my statement was 11 Q. Uh, I mean, one Q. Uh, 11 Q. I'm sorry. 11 Q. Uh, no, one Q. Uh, one Q. Thirteen Melchizedek. Huh? It says it speaks about Melchizedek being Yahweh when they quoted from Isaiah 61 verse two. I'm gonna so check making, it now, and I'm gonna yeah, I do it now. Do it now. It's, it's no I problem. Do it now. Hold on. I've got yeah, 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 no problem. Can, can, can I finish my not, statement? Why you do it? Does, what what does one Q? What does one Q say? One Q thirteen uh, uh, Melchizedek is it equates Melchizedek to Yahweh, replacing the name of Yahweh with Melchizedek as per Isaiah sixty one two. Okay. So that's two well, persons. So how did you, de Wait, how did you derive? That? How did you derive that they believe that God is three persons from that? Did you? Where were you for the last three minutes? Because I just told but you. You said they believe. Uh, you said, said they believe in least. a multi person God. How does that constitute multi a multi person God? Because that's two persons, Melchizedek and Yahweh. <laughs> Father and Melchizedek. No, 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 is... no, no, brother Yazid has made a mistake. This is this this is what this is the actual thing. Melchizedek is called King of Salem and priest of the God Most High. That's what he's called. You joke. That's not even that's not, what that's not even a scroll. That's that's what that's, what, that's literally what the the Jewish apocalyptic literature reads. I I told you. I've, you didn't even quote it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't I'm reading. It. I'm, I'm actually going for because. What does it say? You know I know it by heart. I know it by heart. I can say it right now by heart. Quote it. You can't tell what me nothing by heart. You can't have access no, to the say it. Say it because you I didn't read it. You what it is. Melchizedek is the is is called the king of Salem. That's not the quotation. That's not the quotation. Eighteen. Both names of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is judges of all nation. That's uh, what Kenny, it is. Can I can I quote it for your people? So because I that was supposed to be about truth. It says. The year of the mercy of Yahweh, as per Isaiah 61 2. And then in Melchizedek, in the scroll, it says, The year of the mercy of Melchizedek. That's word for word. I just quoted it. You, you didn't, you didn't even go anything. to the scroll. Listen, you, you don't quoted. even have access to the scrolls. I've, I'm, I'm reading from Giza Look, Burmes, Anybody, who's a anybody can go to 11Q 13 Melchizedek. It's oh, not 1Q. 11Q. You see, you didn't go. Okay, so, it's so, 11. Okay, hold on. 11Q 13. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Everybody go to it. Okay, hold on one second. So, 
All right, let's take a deep breath. Let's be patient. All right, Brother Mustafa, what uh, you reason reading from uh, Giza Vermis, and what what does it say there? So, so I'm reading. Um, so here, here actually, um, I'm reading from the um, Melchizedek in the apocalyptic literature, which he is recognized as the um, the priest. Hold on, let me just go there. Let's go back to it. He's recognized as the king of Salem and priest of God the Most High, 1418, i.e. giving him names. Um, Melchizedek is the judge of all nations, meaning that's how the they, they saw him to be a very prominent figure. They never took him to be a god. This is not what the literature reads or says that about Melchizedek. He's trying to put this, trying to go back to use it as his understanding to say, I'll prove a point to say those guys, them days, took Melchizedek as a god as well. If they can have one person, uh, you know, a Yahoo, you know, or their God as two persons. Why can't we? But okay, it's let me ask, let me ask you a question, then, Brother Mustafa. That's great. So, uh, it is this have the word is this, Yahweh in it? Is is no. this before? Is this before? He's not even quoting. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let's be let's be gentlemen. Okay, so is this before or after the verse of the of the Bible in the Bible that I cannot recall right now, where it mentions You're the name Yahweh forward. and it says that this will be the name that he's forever known by. Uh, is this verse about Melchizedek before or after this? So this is an apocrypha, um, Kenny. So it will be okay. something before they read, uh, they would have um, known about him, little, little what we had knowledge of. So uh, I, I, I think... talking about, yeah. about, the, about Yahweh, the name Yahweh in particular, yes, yes. is going to be the name that... Is that before... Is that is the verse about Yahweh before this Melchizedek verse or is it after? Oh, it's somewhere? before. It's before, so the verse about Yahweh is before Melchizedek. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, the, great. So, so and so in that verse about Yahweh, it's stating that this is the name that Yahweh is going to be known by for forever. But somehow now we're imposing the name Melchizedek upon Yahweh, <laughs> and then later on, also in the New Testament, trying to impose the name Jesus, peace be upon him, on Yahweh. I just want to make that point because I find that. I find that to be a, a bit interesting to say. That's the that is can, 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 I, can I just add a little, please? Just a little. No, 11, 11 Q 13 Melchizedek. He didn't quote it. I know it by heart. I know it because I actually read it. Um, anybody who's read listening, it? Can you just ask anybody who's listening, anybody in the crowd who's listening, listen to what Dawa Connected said. Please do your research so that way you, when the next time you hear him speaking, you know he doesn't say nothing serious. Let's, let's not let's not make let's I'm not sorry, make personal. But things. it's a let's lie. Just, but it's a lie. Well, let's, let's lie. hold on, hold on. Let's not let's not use certain language. Okay, no problem. Offensive. Kenny, okay, so let's Kenny, just you be, could verify let's be this right now. You could verify okay. this right now to and prove that somebody's lying because there's one okay, of us. Well, who's lying. I, don't think, I don't think the brother's lying. I think okay, he's, let, let him right, explain. I don't let make a point. Let's let you make a point. Kenny, please be respectful. Please, I, I, I'm always respectful, but one of us is lying. No, but you you, you went on personal attack, which is no, really not nice. Logic. I'm not. That's logic. You know what? It is. You know That's what it logic. Is, like. You know what it is. That's I what it is, brother. Brother Yazid pinned him down. He's now in a situation. Brother Kenny's even got him there. He's in a situation where he needs a way out. He's going back to. Um, he's going back to what? 100, 200. We, we, years we're not even Christ. discussing the Bible anymore at this point. Yeah. You, this one is brother Yazid. That's how bad it's become now. He's trying. He said, "I've memorized it." He hasn't memorized. He hasn't memorized any verses from the Bible. He hasn't memorized any verses from the Bible. But I've memorized the one of the um, DSS scrolls. I've memorized it. Somehow he's got access to the scrolls. And scholars like Giza Vermas yes. and others. I have books on that, and they, they don't have a clue about it. But he has it. Halas. I've had enough of this guy's jokes. And you know what? His jokes are not funny anymore. Kenny, I I used to laugh can at I you. say one thing before I leave? Kenny, there's one yeah, thing, uh, and this is my last final, final word. You could be a, a, against me. It's no problem. But I'm one thing for sure. No, no, no. I, I mean a different position or, or different religion. But one thing I, I would never do to you. I have a different belief, but I'm against you. Yeah, I have a different no problem. belief. Different religion. Different religion. One thing I would never do to you is lie in your face. Because I'm. that's me spitting in your oh, face. Oh, for crying that's out That's me spitting in oh. 11, oh, 11 Q, on, 13, Melchizedek, Dead Sea Scroll. Everybody 11 Q, 13 this. what? Thank you. 11 Q, 11 Q 13, 13 what? Melchizedek. That, the whole Which scroll. Verse? Which verse? It's, 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 the scroll is not a verse. It's well, a how, about, how about you share what you're looking at? The English Terry, translation has been, brought, it has been split up into verses. No, so no, no. What, what, section, what section of 11 Q, 13 are you referring to? 
read the whole thing. It's only a scroll. There's no verses in the scroll. I'm reading from two. I'm reading it. I'm, I'm looking so, for what so you're talking about. Do control F, control F, and put uh, Isaiah 60, 61 2. I'm looking so at it's, that. It's not, it's, let's clarify it. So it's, it, it's, as someone, matter of fact, to, to Mimi, he's mentioned that it's not uh, part of the Bible. It's no, it's not, not part of the Bible. Right. I, it was right. never my argument. It was never my, argu I mean, yeah, my well, argument. I understand was, that, but it, it, it's, it's not Jews. a part of the Bible. It doesn't mention the word Yahweh, and it doesn't talk about multiple persons of God. I, I, I went so to the that. original question. I bring that up, and I, I'm glad that Tamimi okay. brought that up as well because I was thinking the same thing. Okay. Is that is that the question that Ab Abu Yazid initially asked was, can you give a verse of the Bible that substantiates the belief in a Trinity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's I, what I, I was about to say. So now, now just we're one on minute, we're Terry. In the no, Terry, I did Terry that just one minute, Terry. Yeah. Terry, one minute. Can I say a few words, please? Terry, one minute. It, the whole, uh, this conundrum started, Terry, uh, where we started, Brother Abu Yazid asked a simple thing, where explicitly in any Bible Jesus said, or Bibles are saying that, hang on, guys, we are three who has to be one? Uh, remember, we were started with that sort of thing that very explicitly stated. We cannot find anywhere there are three gods. Look, I have got one, two, three fingers, three persons who suddenly I have to believe is not three fingers, has to be one thumb. It, this is what we are trying to find in Bible that very explicitly God himself or saying that hang on i sent this guy named jesus peace be upon him and he will tell you he's telling us that we are three now before used to be one but you all have to consider three of us as one it, it doesn't show us in the any any verse in the bible it doesn't say only jesus said in the bible i remember from many many debates i have watched all Jesus is saying about this sort of things, they're saying you're all supposed to be seek eternal life. And he explained what is this, what is eternal life? This is eternal life that you all should believe the only true God is Father. And also you should believe I'm the only sent by him. If you believe that I am God as well, that's not Jesus preaching. Jesus preaching that you all should believe. This is, what is eternal life? Explained by Jesus. This is eternal life. That we all believe Father is the true and only God. Not me. I am only sent by him. And you know what? which verse we are talking about? I know. You know exactly. I know. I know. So please do not, if you love Jesus, don't but be, don't go against him. If, if you love no, Jesus. no, there is no if and buts, brother. No, no if and no. buts. If speak, when right? I say, uh, if I say, or my brother ya Abu Yazid say, or brother Kenny say, if or but, I will not listen to him. Okay. And but, that's uh, what uh, we are Muslim, doing. Right? You're Muslim, okay. equal scales. I let you speak. <laughs> I, I, I let you speak. Okay. Let me just uh, this is reply because you said se uh, John 17 3. It, uh, it's not it's about being Muslim or Christian, it's, it's about you. We are talking about Muslim. Jesus. Equal scales, equal scales. You say, I, I heard you speak. I just want to finalize. Um, okay, okay. If, go, if, go ahead. This is my last, and this is my last one for real. You brought sure. John 17, 3, but you haven't read John 1 or, the, or oh. John 17, 3, the whole chapter. I know you didn't. And you certainly didn't read First John. How do you five. know I did not? Okay. How many uh, times we have been John? told to read okay. everything? How many okay, what, times we what have? Is John, what but is you John? do not assume. Hey, well, I, I know it by heart. Let me tell you what okay. it says, Terry. Wait, 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 wait. I know it by heart. Says, one, 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 one thing, one verse. Do you know in First John chapter 5, it says Jesus is the eternal life? Do you know that? Or do you know in John why? 17? Wait, wait. Do why you know John Jesus is do what you know it? why Jesus is eternal life? Go because ahead. he's telling us what is eternal life. He's no, explaining he he us is. that this is. is. So when no, you listen to me, then I will tell you what it is. If somebody says, I have eternal life with me, you say, oh, hang on. What is eternal life? Then I will explain to you what is eternal life. And he is telling us. He's himself. He's saying this is eternal life. 
that you and me and all believe the Father is only true God. And okay. don't believe okay. that I am. Understand. You know, but Understand. please do not. If you are a good Christian, you will never go against Jesus. Okay, and, and if you're a good Muslim, you, 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 you I will not get if wait, wait. No, I, I if, if I'm a, I heard you. Listen, listen, if I'm, I'm a good Muslim, Muslim, yes, if, you're good Muslim, if I'm a good Muslim, never listen, say a listen, 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 my never statement if I'm a good Muslim. No, because I heard you. Listen, please. Please. listen, can you hear me from right. me? I'm going to show I'm a good Muslim. Can you Christian. hear? Speak. Okay, brother, so brother. If brother, you brother, listen uh, to a good Muslim, I will not go no, against yeah. Jesus. Okay, okay, let's let's, let's, and if let's you're a good Muslim, this briefly. And, and, and if and if you, thank you, Bomer, and this really my last word. If you're a good a Muslim, don't ever say a prophet is eternal life because Muhammad can be a, a eternal life. Okay. No one said that. No okay. One made, Jesus no, said I'm he not is saying, eternal life. Jesus said. But he you is. said that. You oh, said okay. that. You said that. That your yeah, first verse is saying the eternal Bomer, life. Bomer. What is eternal life? Explained okay. by Jesus. Uh, you know what's funny? Okay. Thank you very much situation. for the hospitality. Okay, Jay, thank you. The original conversation. Thank you very much for the hospitality. Okay, what happened right? at the beginning of the con What happened to what we were talking about? Uh, you know, the reason, the reason you know, why I went to situation? one thing. The you only were, reason, brother, I, you've been talking for you've been talking for over an hour. You asked, you asked you me a question. You could gave it, and you could have easily gave what I asked for in the beginning I did. of the conversation. I did. I did. I did. Whole I, did. I, I did it because I'm an honest and person. I can't lie. I can't lie. You're, I don't you, think you, anyone's convinced, to be honest. Not, not about your honesty, honesty, but I'm saying no, about, no, the, no, about no, the, no, the no, argument. You might, be, you, you, might you might be right. I have in front of me right now. I have Mel, Mel Chesedek 11Q, even though it's not relevant to the conversation. I have okay, it in front ahead. of me right now, and it doesn't say what you claim it says. But it's Read completely it. irrelevant. Read it. It's completely Read it. irrelevant. Read it. Because if, if I'm lying, I should go to hell. Read it. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't take, it's, it's not going to take you more than a minute. I know how long the paragraph is. Read it. Okay. Because I read it. 13, this is the time decreed for the year Melchizedek flavor. Isaiah. Okay, right there. <laughs> you just read it. <laughs> this is the year of, of, of the mercy of Melchizedek. He's quoting from Isaiah 61 2, the very verse that says Yahweh, the eternal name. The very first line. Okay, and that means what? Well, equating Melchizedek to Yahweh because Melchizedek so, okay. so is replacing you, so Yahweh with Melchizedek. Melchizedek. So you worship Melchizedek? I, I do. Jesus Christ is Melchizedek. Amen. Well, man, Thank man, you. Terry, if you, if you thought to consider that maybe, you worship, you worship maybe God the, the mercy, Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, Jesus, and, Mel, and Melchizedek. Melchizedek is Jesus. Let, let me make another po just brief point. It's, it's, it'll be real quick, okay? So we Thank talked you. about what earlier about. The persons of God. Hold on, brother. Uh, brother Abby, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I just want to make one just quick, quick point. It'll be real quick. So earlier we were talking about sending blessings upon the prophet, right? So have you thought that maybe consider that this phrase. This is the period of what, whatever it says about the the uh, of the mercy well, that's of, of Melchizedek. Of, like, now, that's an interpretation of Isaiah. Right. Isaiah so it could it could very well mean, brother Abiyazi. Hold on a second. So it could very well mean that this is the, the mercy that is shown to Melchizedek. Can Not I read the rest of it? Can I continue yes. reading the rest of it? Yeah. Can I read? Can I? Because the rest of it to me shows the uh, the meaning of the text of this what? interpretation. This isn't scripture. This isn't scripture. This is someone's interpretation. This is the time. To, this is the time decreed for the year of Melchizedek's favor, and it gives a reference where Isaiah six one two, and by his might he will judge God's holy ones, and so establish a righteous kingdom. Oh, you so could continue. Is it's not finished. Uh, hold on, continue. I'll continue. Actually. Let me finish it for you, as a brother. Please, can you? But I was in line, right? And therefore, I Melchizedek. Therefore, line. Melchizedek <laughs> will thoroughly persecute vengeance required Kenny, by Kenny. God's God's Kenny, if I leave, okay, let me give you two Kenny, references let you go. only. Hold on, okay. you could say one uh -huh. Tell me. as a Christian. Tell I did not lie to your face. No, 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 you did lie. Listen, let me prove it. Tell you, I'm going to prove it to you now. Jerome, no, you're a liar. Okay, no, all right, listen. I'm gone. Let's, I'm let's gone. let Brother Mustafa speak, speak just for a second. All right, go ahead, Brother Mustafa. Let me prove it to you now. So this is God. This is um, God, um, Granarod, uh, in his book, Abraham Melchizedek, Scribal Activity of Second Temple, uh, page 208 to 210. And then you've got from John. Uh, I'm talking scholars, what they are saying regarding this. I'm going to give the names as a scholar scholars. if you want. 11, okay, let him, let him 11, make his listen, point, Terry. 11. I'm giving there's about four references of scholars that I can give from their books. You don't want to hear the scholar scholars, that's fine. This is what the overall um this is what the overall is. 11 Q13. 
an 11Q Melchizedek document is fragmentary manuscript among, amongst the DSS cave 11, which mentions Melchizedek as a leader of God's angels, a war in heaven against the angels of darkness instead of more familiar archangel Michael. This text, uh, the text is, uh, 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 um, uh, the text is uh, a collective commentary of the Jubilee year of Leviticus 25. DSS scrolls contains text in Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. So they're not telling us anything that this is representing, this is uh, your God in any shape or form. He's the head leading angels. And I said it before that he is a like the head of the angels. He's the head, he's the he's working for God. He ain't God. So if you're gonna worship Melchizedek, then I'm really sorry, sir. You're a pagan for doing that. Well, Melchizedek is called Yahweh. I, I didn't go to no scholar. I went where? straight to the text. Where? 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 Yes, where? Where does it say the name? In the Isaiah show us 61 the two. Show us, the, show us the manuscript. Show us the manuscript that says the name. Isaiah I thank you four scholars. Isaiah 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 Patience There's here. All right. So remember earlier when I when I made a point, I made a point and I said that it's unfair. It would be unfair and unjust for our creator to have us to, to have to work out riddles and rhymes. Right. That, that's unjust. It's not fair because this is this is confusing to the average mind. It's it's it, we should be able to ask rational questions and have rational answers to these questions. So if 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 now. Yahweh is is Melchizedek and Melchizedek is Jesus and Jesus is the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is Yahweh. And I mean, my goodness, we're all over the place with this. And I'm not being funny about it. I'm, I mean, this is literally the reality that we're dealing with from the Christian, the Christian explanation. And it defies logic. It defies reason. It defies rationale. And we should hold our, our creator to a standard. But, 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 and that standard would be to give, it, give his creation. Yeah, well, to give his creation. Hold on one second. To give give creation a clear understanding of who he is before before he judges us, and but, uh, in, in, in believe, Islam we have that. It's, in Islam we have that. But we believe our God is great; that He only leads those who really seek Him diligently. No, come I, on. Okay, no, that's no, that's no, condescending. No, no, Listen, no, no, hold on, I gotta put you on. Well, I gotta I, put you. <laughs> hold on, I, I want you to talk. Hold on, hold on. You talking quite you a bit. Take, Listen, you this you let me make a point. You take it. Let me make a point. The Jews and turn it into a mystery school. Yeah. So no, listen, wait, let me make a point. Let me make a point. Hold on. Where's Melchizedek? Where's Melchizedek? Everybody, hold on. Hold on for a second. Just just one second. Just one second. One second. That the, the whole point, Terry, is that that again, this is this is a if if we gotta go and we gotta bounce over here and bounce over there and bounce over here and bounce over there. Listen, most people don't even like to read. So it leaves most people to just what to just accept what, what the church tells them, right? Most people don't like to read. You agree with that, right? And so the I thing read. is, the thing is, even the people who read, the people who read and who engage yeah. in these discussions often, it People people can't wrap their minds around it, and and the point that I wanted to make is that it's very condescending to say that you can't understand because you don't have the Holy Spirit. But you, you have know, to you read. Don't, you, you, don't have have a, read. you don't have a you don't have a desire to. Hold on, hold on. You anybody, don't have a desire to. to anybody to reading understand. Isaiah sixty one and two come away with look, look the idea? My, look at my Bible. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. I'm asking you a question. Is it, how would anyone? But I want to address how, how would anyone. Boomer, how look, I yes. read. How, I'm not how, saying you, I didn't say you don't read. No, hold on, no, hold on, brother. I'll be as You have to read. How, how yeah, but I didn't say that. Listen, my, my, Bible's, I'm sure my Bible's got more highlights in it than you. I assure you, I promise you it does. But so I, I, never said, I never said, hold Can on, hold on. Question? Hold on. I, I never said, hold on, brother. I'll be as I never said that you don't Please. read. What I said is that the, what we do read, we should expect that our creator is guiding us to yes. something that's clear if he's going to judge us on that. He did it for me. He did, he it, did for it for you. Okay. Yes. Definitely, well, I, definitely. Okay. All right, okay. Terry. That's it's. Okay. So I wasn't where, born with it, this. Where, where does I Isaiah sixty one? Well, yeah, say you just said it. You wasn't born with that. Where does Isaiah sixty one say that Yahweh is the Melchizedek? Where does it say? I, I, I'm sorry. I, and uh, I don't know where you've been for the last ten minutes. I said the Essenes equate. They they they, they translate. Uh, they, they 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 call Melchizedek uh, Yahweh. They use the same verse. I don't know where you've been. Uh, That's right. what I went to the okay. Dead Sea Scrolls. If, if you as an evangelist, I went to the Dead Sea Scrolls. I don't know where you were. Is you as an evangelist give a Bible to someone you want to proselytize? And they pick up the Bible and read Isaiah 61 and 2, 
how are they to know that Yahweh in that verse is representing Melchizedek and Melchizedek is supposed to be Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is Melchizedek, who is Yahweh. Perfect. And the Holy Spirit also. Ne next, next. No, it's not the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, Isaiah no, uh, 40. Well, the Holy Spirit's part of all of it, right? So yeah, yeah, the Holy definitely, Spirit definitely. is Melchizedek, right? No, it's not. It's not, uh, uh, no. not the Holy Spirit. No, I never said so that. I, well, I never said that. Come on, Kenny. Wait, Kenny. Wait, Kenny, wait, Kenny, wait, wait on. a minute. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying oh, to understand God. sincerely. I want to understand. So if 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 the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, right? Yes. Then you're saying that Melchizedek is Yahweh. Then the Holy Spirit is part of Melchizedek. He's inside of Melchizedek, but he's not the person of Melchizedek. Come on, uh, Kenny. I never said. I never once said that the Holy Spirit is is Melchizedek. Where did you get no. that from? Where did wait, you wait, get wait. That from? That's where a different you get question. You asked me a last question. You asked me. But where did you get that from? That. Where did you, you asked me a question before that. Can I go to the first question? Do you remember your first question? Yes. Okay. So um, how, how would they know that Isaiah 61, 2 is speaking about Melchizedek? Well, they will go to Isaiah 40 to Isaiah 66, and it will be clearly established that the uh, uh, the servant, the army Yahweh, is the son of God. That will be clearly established. I'm not going to do that today. But my, the reason why I went to the Essenes is to establish that before Christianity, there were Jews, because everybody says the Jews, the Jews. There were some Jews, some real religious Jews in the caves that believe at least in two persons. That's the only reason why I went to- They didn't the, believe in two persons. persons. You haven't established they believed in two persons. Can I, can I, I, I give it to you, brothers. but I can leave now. I can leave okay, now. Can I, 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 I even, if we, even if we take brothers. your argument on face value, hold on, let me get this brothers. point off. Even brothers. if we take your argument on face value, if we take your argument on face value <laughs> that the Essenes believe Melchizedek was, all, was Yahweh, that still doesn't tell us that Achille, they're two Achille, persons in Yahweh. Don't, don't, Achille, don't, there's no point on here. I'll tell you why. Look, remember what, what the scholar's name I said, Giza Vermes. And Brother yeah. Kennedy didn't ask me for a reference. This is in Giza Vermes' book, um, The Complete DSS Scrolls in English, um, by Giza Vermes in page 532. This is, I've got the PDF. If you want, I can send it to you guys and you can even show it. 532. And this is what he writes Giza Vermes from his book. Uh, the new uh, the edition of uh, 2000 and something the heavenly deliverer is Mel melchizedek identical with the angel archangel michael he is the head of the sons of heaven or, or gods of justice gods of justice and he's referred as as referred as the um as elohim he's referred as elohim remember elohim doesn't mean the god it means deity like judges are and all of that so what did he say terry He's supposed to be the God, the divine name. But this is not what our scholar Giza Vermis is saying. Um, and then again, he's saying the same terminology occurs in, in other books and so and so. So again, oh, what, exactly, All what exactly is, is he trying to bring? Nothing. But uh, my, point is, my point is, even if we took his argument, even if we accepted his premise, that somehow 100 years before Christ, there were some people who believed Melchizedek was Yahweh, that still doesn't tell us that God is three distinct persons. No. <laughs> it still doesn't give us the doctrine of the Trinity. No no way. Yeah. No. Tamimi, you're right. He doesn't believe in scholars. Now, Jazakallah khair, brother Abu Yazid and Kenny and everyone, brother, um, behold, and uh, our brother who hasn't no, got no. my flag yet, Australian brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, um, look, his arguments brother, are bad. Brother, rather, brother than answering, rather than answering your question, brother Abu Yazid, Mashallah, you pinned him down. What does he do? He runs to um, uh, the DSS. Look, he's writing again. He said, why is Mustafa lying about the DSS? I've just given you the reference of the book, Giza Vermis, page 532. Get the book. Ask me. I'll give it to you as an email. Read it. He's a scholar of the DSS fragments, man. I'm not a scholar. You're not a scholar. He is. And he wrote that. What do you want me to do? I'm quoting it word for word, what he said. He wrote. Sorry. So I can't be wrong in... Uh, Kenny, am I wrong in quoting a scholar? No, brother. No. No, no. 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 But no, my no. thing is, uh, <laughs> it's clear that none of these, uh, none of these people, whether it was the original authors of whoever wrote the Torah, whether it was the original audience who received the Torah, whether it's the people who wrote uh, about Melchizedek a hundred years before Jesus, none of these people were Trinitarians. So how do you keep going to these people to prove Trinitarianism? How do you come to me? I'm not a Trinitarian. How do you well use said. my words to prove Trinitarianism? Well said. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Brothers, uh, uh, we sense. are. 
That doesn't yes. make sense. Three and a half hours. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, brothers, uh, just quick words. Um, Alhamdulillah, this whole debate or uh, discussion started where Brother Abu Yazid asked a very simple question that where is in any biblical source or Bibles, Jesus has explained Trinity or Bible itself explicitly say that this is three gods now and Trinity is this and we all got to believe. It, it doesn't say anywhere. We all understand, but it goes all different, different direction. Then one of our brother uh, explained what God's supposed to be. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be very straightforward for a layman to understand what God it is. And then one of the brothers said, How beautifully explained. Exactly. And then, then and I yeah. are related to each other. Yes. And then further on, it's it's like my Christian brothers who are probably going to watch or watching these streams, uh, they're all baffling with this. Okay, this one finger, two fingers, three fingers. How many fingers? Three fingers. But yeah. but mystery is, don't look at these fingers. They are actually one thumb. That's <laughs> this is this is really uh, this is what we are trying to teach our kids. This is yeah. how we're going to uh, tell them that what is God. This is what we are going to tell them. If you don't understand three fingers as not three fingers, then think it is mystery. So please, <laughs> let's have respect towards everything and make but sure that we uh, or see. There are pens coming out as well. The, these yeah, are not four. These but, are not four. They're, they're one. They're one. These are one. Don't you believe me? This is nothing well, but no, no, it nothing is. of it's polytheism. He's trying to, they're so, trying to justify polytheism at all cost when you take if you look at his own bible and he talks about yahweh speaking from different perspectives with different voices and you'd say different voices equal a per a voice equals a person and whose language in whose dictionary does a voice equal a person he's quoting from all over the place going from one verse no, here no, and one no. verse there give, give it give it in, in order within context the, 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 you don't quote one chapter after three chapters after five books after seven <laughs> whatever and then say oh it's one no it doesn't, it doesn't. but uh -huh. ironically brother 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 uh abu yazid ironically how uh, how sad it is that they all love uh, jesus peace be upon him they all reverend they all uh, are s slave of uh, jesus peace be upon him and when jesus peace be upon him telling clearly there is no god but allah in in bible it says that the only true god is the father and do not think that i am a god i'm sent by him this is what is eternal life and they will refute jesus and try to justify this these this whole statement against jesus from here there or whatever so this yeah. this is not nice this is uh, i don't but think it know, is uh, what they call like honest People like Terry refute their own God. He's exactly. that's right. Own God. Exodus 20 and 30. An explicit state. This is not I don't have to take you to 50 different different places and tell you one word a word says one thing, but it really means something completely different than what the word actually says. <laughs> Exodus 23, you shall have no other gods yeah. besides me. Yeah. Now, now, Second now, commandment. Is that not a, a explicit, explicit? Explicit. Do I yeah, have that's, to that's the point that I was trying to make. Instead, of, instead of it going with that, they want to bounce around and, and work riddles. I don't want to work riddles. I want I want my God, my Creator, to tell me clearly, and that's what Allah does in the verse in the Surah Ali class that He's telling us to say. As a matter of fact, tell the people that Allah is one, the only Holy. God, the eternal, Holy. the absolute. I think he said he worships Melchizedek. I think he said he worships him. Then they he wonder why we find in the Quran when Allah says that they worship Ezra. And then they say, How could we? we you just claimed you worship Melchizedek. You just said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I do because Wallahi, bro, this is the kind of level of disrespect they've gone to. Yeah, they're 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 they're
they do twice. what you mean. This is exactly what you do in Kufr. Auzubillah. He said it twice. I remember. And by, the, and, by the, and by the way, I wanted to ask him, he might watch this later, if he would like to debate the issue, did Jesus, peace be upon him, claim to, to be God? You see, not only for him, but for yeah. anyone listening, from now, in yeah, the future, well, anytime, yeah. if anyone would, would like to take that on, from an official moderated but debate. He, in his own, he, he admitted himself, he has taken the religion of the believers in the past and changed it into a mystery school. Mm -hmm. A mystery school. This is what the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Greeks and the Romans believed in. Mystery schools. That The idea that, that there were hidden, and within a sentence, there are hidden algorithms. Words don't really mean what they really mean. They mean something else. And if you're, if you're blessed by the gods, you have the power to figure out what the word really means, even though the word says something completely different. You can figure out these, you know, these equations and, and you can put words together and you can piece things together and draw, make out a picture from different. Right. Words. Now, in order to do it, you have to imagine you have to imagine that God's within you to imagine that what you want to believe is in the text. I mean, that's, exactly. that's in summary. You have to You're imagine super imposing your audience. ideas on the text. Yeah. The, original and, audience, and the original audience of the text that he pointed to Deuteronomy. Remember, these were people who just came out of slavery. These are yep. not. These are not. These are. These are people who don't even have what we would call an equivalent of a high school education. Some of these people were probably illiterate. They were yes. slaves, and he wants us to believe the original audience believes what he believes. A mystery school. By the way. Yeah. By the way, he said that he has to go and he has something to do, but he's still he quoting in the text. text. And brother, brother Mustafa, <laughs> and brother Mustafa, brother Mustafa, uh, uh, last or least, my few words about your B uh, Bengali flag, brother, you are in our hearts, and anything, uh, all Bengalis sitting there, if uh, they are listening, uh, this is my message for them that what happened 1947 or afterwards we have been divided at 1947 anyway so uh, this is uh, this was a shaitan work anyway so brother mustafa never ever think otherwise but you are real brothers as well i can put 2000 flag I, I can put 2000 flags on my house of bengal or ba bangladesh no issues let me no problem, you, brothers. We are we are all brothers, inshallah, brothers. Thank you very much for taking my words. Thank you, uh, and thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you, brother Abu Yaziz, for coming in today, enlightening us a lot. And brother, uh, um, brother Ziad Karam up there, uh, mashallah. Thank you very much for late nights. And uh, I can see you were very up. You know, it's a challenging to be around with Terry, and uh, but you know, it's a test. So, Brother Kenny, thank you very much for letting us in as well. And uh, uh, Brother, brother, what is his name? Brother Mustafa. Uh, once more, once more, I really, really respect you a lot, brother, especially Brother Faz as well. And um, uh, there is no difference between us. If no, no, brother, no, no, no. Faz, brother Faz or me or you. No, but 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 to, uh, the Inshallah. show is for Brother Kenny and Brother um, Abu Yazid. I think we should show Brother Abu Yazid the most yeah. respect for learning so much from Brother Abu Yazid today. Mashallah. Show, um, his introduction and I mean, Subhanallah, Jazakallah khair, Brother Abu Yazid. Oh, yeah. We want to see more of you, Brother. I mean, today we just saw a fraction of your information. I mean, Jazakallah khair, bro. You you know. Let me let me say something real quick. I was been, I've been dealing with a uh, a missionary on TikTok. He says the same thing this guy says. The missionary on TikTok argued for the Trinity by saying God became a bush, a burning bush. God became a cloud. And God oh, became the, uh, the donkey that spoke to, uh, I forgot the... I forgot Balaam. The name. Balaam. Yeah. Yes, numbers, Balaam. Tw numbers 22. Yeah, this is what these people believe. God became a donkey. Stuff God so became long. a donkey. God was a... He's arguing that God was a burning bush. God became a burning bush. The what unchanged, level are they on, man? Stop the unchanged, you have to explain to us how does an unchanging God who's immaterial turn into a burning bush? 
turns into a donkey? Do you worship the donkey? The same way you worship Melchizedek. So you worship the donkey too. You worship the donkey. The donkey. Why don't you have, instead of a cross, why don't you have a burning bush? Why don't you worship exactly. the burning bush? Why don't you the donkey the was beaten by, by its owner and then it spoke. So and the guy responded as if nothing happened. I, I mean, if my donkey spoke back to me, I would be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a stroke. I'm like, what? <laughs> and the guy gets into the conversation with the donkey as if nothing happened. Anyway, it's time for Fajr here yeah, in Athens, same. Greece. It's 4.09 a.m. And alhamdulillah, it's time for Fajr. So if we're going to close the show. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna close it out. All right. Uh, so, thank you, brothers, for joining the panel and uh, and sharing the truth and the beauty of Islam. Thank you for everyone for watching and the people in the chat and the moderators. Thank you for doing uh, work in the chat and trying to maintain control there. And uh, we surely we mean no offense to any Christians or anyone's faith and so forth. And uh, we do, uh, uh, you know, we are encouraged to invite to the way of our Lord with wisdom and kind words. And so. Uh, we get caught up in heated discussions and emotions get uh, into into the mix, but uh, no no disrespect is meant. And uh, so I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his final servant, the seal of all prophets. Thank you, Brother Abu Yazid, for being my special guest. And maybe we'll do a part two as you read further in that book. And we'll talk about yeah, this some more the things. Book. This way, yeah. We didn't even get, we didn't even. Yeah, we'll, touch, we'll, touch, we'll do it again. We'll do it again, inshallah. Yeah. Brother Ziad, thank you for coming. Brother Muhammad. Uh, Bucky, down at the bottom there, and Brother Mustafa. Um, and uh, so be sure to tune in to, I think, Brother uh, Muhammad with Coventry Faith Foundation. He's got a, a debate coming up tomorrow, inshallah, I believe, if it's still on. Uh, so be looking for that. And uh, make sure you subscribe to all the channels on Consider This TV, the network. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. So, brothers, assalamu alaikum. Hey, listen, one last thing. If you'd like to donate to the, the Consider This TV water well project, I'm going to post the link in the chat. Listen, just post one, just donate one dollar, whatever you got. It's yeah. it's going to go to a good cause so we can get more of these water wells built in areas of the world where water is, is uh, scarce. So may Allah uh, accept your efforts and your intentions, and may Allah have mercy on each and every one of us. A shadow Allah, ilaha illallah, a shadow now Muhammad and Abduhu wa Razul, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله